We're here. Yep. Hey. Hey now. It's How's good. everybody doing? Awesome. Whose show is this? <laughs> None of us. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's nobody's show. Nope. Well, I'll take it over tonight. Okay, good. Go. Man, my hair's on point. You're welcome, everyone. What's going on? Metal Wednesday, last Wednesday of the month. And I apologize for the echoing, but um, at least I look good. I'm, or, I don't know, maybe. But anyway, <laughs> what's going on, everyone? And Jay, I'm, Jay, I'm still waiting for uh, the little uh, handheld clapper, if I may. You I'll never send me one? Link. I'll send you the link. <laughs> send me the link, you son of a bitch. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for, for tuning in. See Johnny's beautiful face and the pointy one, Jay Hannon. Thank you for uh, tuning in, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's Metal Wednesday. We talked about metal. Maybe we'll talk a little Van Halen because of our topic tonight. So it should be a good time. What, oh. really? Is that, that's why I'm here, huh? Is, it, is, this, is this Friday? <laughs> Every day is Van Halen day, man. I guess it is. That's sure. fine. That's fine. I, I hey, if if you want to talk Van Halen, I hear echo. Is that Brian? You have your speakers on pump. Turn it down. Okay, I'm good now. Mister uh, Technical Difficulties over there. <laughs> I've only done this for like almost a year, and I'm still messing up. So well, it's only like one show a month, so it's it's easy to get it all crossed up and. Said it's better now. I don't hear myself. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, sounds good. All right, thanks. Sounds good. But we do have something cool, and obviously, you know, virtually every topic that we discuss on the metal show is Brian's idea, and I'm gonna throw myself under the bus here. You know, we have a we use our notes app on our iPhones, and Brian is very organized, and he sets up a a, a, a notes thing that he and I are a part of, and he does the topics, the lists, all this stuff. And he'll ask me like a few times during the month before the show, the, the lead up to it. Hey, did you check out the, you know, the notes for the, the show? Oh yeah, I got to do it. Oh yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. And it, for the last few months, it's all, well, obviously last month I, I wasn't here, but it's like the day of, I'm one of those guys, like a book reports due. Oh no, it's due tomorrow. You know, and I haven't yeah. done it yet. I'm, I'm that type of guy. So I'm a big procrastinator. And yeah. um, you just read but, the back real quick. <laughs> yeah, Copy then, it word for word. And yeah. then fill in, fill in the blanks. Um, <laughs> but I did make my list today because today we're going to discuss the top 80s albums ever. Metal albums ever. And we're going to take a little bit of awesome. liberties because not every one of mine is metal metal. Right. There's one I had to throw in there, and everybody will kind of understand why. But um, it's going to be kind of cool, I, th I think so. Because the '80s is more more along the lines of my, um, you know, even though I really didn't get into metal until the end of the '80s with like Injustice for All. Um, you know, I did dabble a little bit before that with like Anthrax slightly. I didn't know who they were. I just had a, a copy of a cassette that my brother had with only side two. Of among the living, I didn't know what it was until a couple of years later. But anyway, we're going to get into that. We're going to discuss a lot of these albums, which yeah. I'm kind of excited for because a lot of these albums are the reason why I am the music fan that I am today and the guitar player that I am today. So, sure, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good one. I love that shirt, awesome. Jay Lucy's. Yep. Um, should we get the, into the particulars? Oh, it looks good. It brings out your high cheekbones. You look handsome. <laughs> Well, it's not a three X because I, I need—I know I need a three X neck to get over the nose when I put the. You know what I do? I just put my head down and put the shirt on like that, so the <laughs> nose doesn't, doesn't get in the way. If I if I put it on, if I put a shirt on with my with facing forward, I have to like bar. I have to get a V neck shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? Oh, we'll get back to that. Yeah. All right. Executive producers of Johnny Bean TV. We have Charles Green, Wayno, Joe Christian, Michael B, Thomas Santiago, Music Therapy Laz, Ben Tom, The Chad, 
James Gunn, David Shagamori, Lenny Liu and Mary, Michael Smith, the captain, Randy Price, Stephen Franklin, Dan the Man Halen. I don't know why I just put the man in there, but I just felt <laughs> that sounds good. That. It, has, it has a good ring to it. Dan the Man Halen. Not just I like that. I like that too. Change that, Johnny, right now on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> in quotes. Crazy Cook 678, Johnny Moronic, Jimmy Ray Hawkins, Mike Neese, Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael! <laughs> become a channel member, click the join button. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed or become a channel member, I don't know what you're doing, but you're messing up big time. Just look at yourself in the mirror. You messed up. Click it. Do yeah. It. Yes. Yeah, if you're not subscribed to this channel, that's that's there's something really wrong. Click it or stick it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Oh, well, we're also live. Uh, actually, no, we're not live there today. We're live there. Oh. Johnny Bean TV Facebook page where we have Tracy Wise and Clayton James Hicks is over there. He says today is Wolfgang Wednesday. It is. Yeah, it That's is. That's right, man. And I, we, we all hope you had a great birthday yesterday, Clayton. Yeah, happy birthday, Clayton. Happy birthday, Clayton. <clears throat> what else do we miss? Awesome. What else? What other? Oh, the Facebook change the color. I like that color that you have right back there, Johnny. That's a nice. You got color. the lights. Any super chats will change the color of my lights. It helps support the show, support these channels. This is actually a combination that I do. It's like a pink and like a, a blue. Yeah. So I it's like it. a combo. That's like my standard setting that I have. Um, but uh, yeah, if you'd like to ruin that, Please click get. the dollar sign. Click the dollar sign below. Help support uh, support these channel and these shows. And on Facebook, we have what's called Facebook Stars. If you'd like to help support over on the Facebook side. So there you go. So I like that pink and blue combination. Obviously, like the uh, Paul Gilbert guitar behind Johnny or behind uh, Brian, but it's it has it has the nice blend of like excitement because of the pink, but then also the calmness of the blue. It's it's a very good. I like that. I, I yeah, that. I like it too. Yeah. I like it too. It's for that getting to know yourself feeling. <laughs> That's right. I like pink. <laughs> I like pink, but I like blue. I like pink. I like blue. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Metal Wednesday, everybody. Yes. What else, any, anything else we have to get to? The weather or the, the news or the sports? Or what do we what do we do next? Uh it's June 30th, 2021, 8 17 p.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. Q3 starts currently... tomorrow for us uh people in the business world. Let's talk I about that. You guys, you guys think... ready? Can you prepare for your business plan for tonight? You guys good? Did yeah. I hear I think I heard about that? <laughs> Q3. Yeah. Q3 yeah, it or, or, or yeah, or it was M something. What's that? M80 is getting blown off. Is that what's happening? I heard I heard something about I don't know. Maybe I dreamed it. Uh, no, that's all right. No, it's just Q3, quarter three, oh. July 1st. Happens every year. So before we get to all this greatest 80s metal albums, um, I'd like to see some uh some people in the chat. I've, I see some already listing their favorites, but um, keep it going. Keep every everybody. Uh, let us know what albums from the eighties. You know, if you want to get like super duper hard rock in there, we'll we'll allow it. We'll allow it. But um, oh, there's gonna be some stuff I'm throwing out there that Jay. I don't know what you're gonna say when I say it, but it's coming. Oh, dude, I have a couple on my list that people are gonna be like, what? You know, but a lot of mine is also kind of expected. You know, I, I took this as a as the albums that I listened to and what would influence me, not like you know, what everybody thinks would be that band's best album. I, it's what I think that band's best album is. So there might be some disagreements, you know, obviously, you know, with bands like Iron Maiden, Metallica, Anthrax there's certain albums that people think they're their best, like, you know, sometimes the earlier ones where I'm kind of the opposite. I go towards, you know, a few, a few later in their, uh, in their catalog. So, right. Yeah. And it's all subjective. This isn't, you know, telling you that you're wrong. 
But uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to giggle at some of Brian's because he's yeah. he's more of the '90s and after metal guy. Yep. So. so since Jay, you weren't on last month, and I know I know you prepared a lot for last show. Maybe oh yeah, you're... yeah. I had that's the one show that I prepared for, and gosh darn it, I wasn't here to. <laughs> Well, there was two, two things that I really wanted to hear and get your opinion on. What do you think of the uh, new Gojira album? I think it's really good. Um, I'll give them a plus and a minus for the same thing. Um, <laughs> it sounds like Gojira, which it's very hard in modern metal, in the modern modern metal world, and especially in this day and age with modern metal recording, where everybody's using the same drum samples, everybody's using the same profiles on their Kemper or whatever. Um, it's it's very hard for bands to sound original and like themselves. And Gojira is one of those bands that as soon as you put them on, it sounds like them. Mastodon is another band as well. Um, you know, obviously Slipknot. Um, there's, there's certain bands that just, they sound like them. Mm -hmm. um, but also... There, what, there's a couple songs on, on the new Gojira record that I really, really like. But at the same time, I feel like, I don't want to say they they played it safe, but there's really nothing that really pushes the envelope that makes it like, oh, you know, it, it sounds like it sounds like, <laughs> like Gojira, and that's a great thing. Sure. But like I said, there's really nothing that, that pushes the envelope to, you know, get me fit, like sitting up in my chair like, oh. What is that? You know, so. Gotcha. And that's, that's all right. You know, it's a great album. But it is. when you are one of the premier metal bands nowadays, I feel like you should, you know, kind of uh, step on the gas a little more on certain things. And I'm not just talking about playing faster or, you know, blast beats. I don't want to hear blast beats in, in certain things. Um, but just, just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I got you. <clears throat> yep. I, I love the new album. I've been, I was just listening to that on the way back from golf. Mm -hmm. Golf. Your favorite. Golf. Your favorite. Lamb of God. That's another band that has their own, their own uh, sound as well. Mm -hmm. A buddy of mine, Josh Wilbur, has been their producer since 2000. And when did Wrath come out? 2009. Oh, Oh, seven? Oh, six, oh, seven, oh, eight, something like that, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to try to get him on the show. That'd be cool. That'd be great. Bring him on here. Talk about some some production, some metal, some mixing. There's so many bands that are coming out with something new soon, or it's in the works of being completed. Like Korn has worked on a new album already, mm -hmm. and they came out in 2019. Slipknot, oh hell yeah, they're working on a new album as we speak that should be finished by the end of July. So mm -hmm. maybe October, November, we'll have some new stuff from Slipknot. So that'd be great. Do you think they're going to put it out that late in the, in the year? I think so. Really? They're also, they're touring, um, I believe in October. So um, I think around then when they go on tour, have some buzz, they'll probably release a single. So, and um, I think they're towing, uh, touring with Code Orange. Mm-hmm. So that'd be pretty cool. And then in um, August, Deftones are playing with Gojira. Oh my gosh. Is a, is a rocket taking off or something? What is that? We have NASA. I'm, I live you next know, to NASA now. It's a launch pad on your, on your, on your roof of your house. No, it's, we have some bad storms. So uh, I didn't. Oh, man. I don't know. We heard that. So every Wednesday, I have a men's league for golf. It's a, <laughs> Five you use that term loosely, right? Men's league, right? Men's. No, it, it's Golf. great. So, um, you know, finish up, then I would come home. So we finished through five holes. I was playing the best golf of the year. You guys would have been so proud of me. Like I can feel how pumped you are for me right now, just through mm -hmm. the screen. Um, and thank you everyone in the chat <laughs> for the love and support. And Sherman. Uh, thank you, Sherman. I, I was I was I had a 28 through five holes, which is filthy for me. And then it just started pouring. So of course I couldn't complete my it's best. In the hole. Yeah, it's all good. 
it's all good. But yeah, the, um, there's some pretty bad storms. So if my internet cuts out or anything crazy, I apologize. Oh, then it'll, just, it'll just revert right back to Van Halen. This will be, be fine. Me and Johnny will be all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, getting back to um, Macedon's working on a new album right now. Yep. Corn, Slipknot. A lot of bands are doing stuff, so it was pretty cool. Um, I think I'm uh, mostly excited for the – yeah, that's right, Jeannie. Golf? <laughs> for the um, – probably the Mastodon record out of all three of those bands. Even though the Slipknot one, obviously I want to – kind of curious, especially with all the talk that uh, you know, Clown has, has been saying. He's um, saying they're making God music? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious to hear it, of course. You know, so yeah. Um, so what do you want to jump into? Do you want to jump? You want to jump like balls in right now with the uh, '80s metal? Before we get into me, uh, the '80s, why don't you briefly run us through your '90s albums that we didn't get to last month? Johnny gave us a plethora of them. I gave you a bunch. We talked about Limp Bizkit for a while that you enjoyed. So yeah, way why too don't you Tell us a little bit about what what you like. I almost feel like um, if if we get into that, it's going to uh, cut into the '80s stuff. I'll just go the do, '90s one. Just go through. I'll just give you a real quick. I don't even. I, I don't even have the thing. I don't know. Maybe I didn't take the list that I thought I did. So oh. obviously, one of the most influential, as far as where I went as a guitar player. Um, Let's see. Oh, Wayno says, am I in the, in the minority? I'm an amateur drummer and I can't stand blast beats except for caught in a mosh intro. P.S. Johnny, check your text, please. Yeah, I, you, I'm Joe. not a big blast beat guy unless it's done in, in like small like increments or whatever, however you want to describe it. Because uh, I mean, personally, in, in Gizmachi, we have a couple here and there, but it's, it's so quick. It's almost like done as a dynamic thing as opposed to a whole part with, you know, you know, just blast beats the whole time. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Wayno. If you want to throw a quick one in here and there to kind of just give it some juice, I'm okay with that. But other than that, I'm, I, you know, like Cannibal Corpse, fine. Blast beats. I'm cool with it. But, I'm, uh, yeah, not really that, that big of a fan. Gotcha. Um, two things, Jay, in regards to putting blast beats in Gizmachi, who decides that? Is that Jimmy? Is that you? Is that a band thing? Like who decides that's that? Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, that's Jimmy. Cause, uh, if anybody listened to the new Gizmachi record, uh, the title track, the last song on the album, um, during the chorus, there's, uh, there's a small section of each chorus that has a quick, you know, like couple measures or whatever of a, of blast beats, but each time Jimmy kind of switches it up, like he'll do like straight, you know, uh, you know, like eighths or something, or sixteenths on the ride, and then the next time around he'll like switch it. You know, it's it's kind of neat how he does uh, changes things up. It's the same part, but he'll just different had different accents on certain things, and it's quick. So you're like, oh hell yeah! And then it switches back up after a drum fill, goes back into the straight, you know, riding the crash cymbal straight on on the on the snare and stuff but yes yeah, i mean if jimmy wanted to throw a blast beat in for an entire part at number one i don't think he'd want to but number two like unless it really served the song we'd probably kind of be like eh you know don't really don't do that don't do that your air drumming skills are filthy tonight by the way oh dude you, you should catch me in the car man <laughs> <laughs> and that, hey really Re Nasty really quick, car, Johnny. Really quick, Wayno. Wayno. Wayno says, Johnny, please say thank you to Boner Jams for sending me my official Gizmachi T-shirt. Oh wow! Yeah. There you go, Wayno. Thanks awesome. for the support, buddy. Thank you, Wayno. Good man. I was about to say that. I was gonna say, Wayno, did you get your shirt yet? So good. <laughs> And then uh, also my daughter, Rory, says hello. Hi, Rory. Hey, Rory. Hey, Rory. Hey, now. So, Jay, all right, get get to your uh, 90s stuff. 
Do you want me to do my whole list and then you go, or do you want to do like one at a time? No, we already heard my list. No one wants to hear my list again. Oh, the nineties one. Oh yeah. I don't want to hear that for six hours again. No, no. <laughs> go in descending order. And I'm then we're... Give, I'm just going to give a couple that I can, I'm thinking of off the top of my head. So when you go through stop and then we'll do a recap of it and then we can keep going through, yeah. keep going. All right, go ahead. So the one nineties metal album that really kind of, pointed the the needle you know <laughs> whatever the hell i'm doing to um where i kind of started playing heavy heavy stuff is the first corn album like i heard it sometime i want to say maybe spring of 95 uh, my neighbors across the street they were huge headbangers and um you know i was already i already listened to, listening to like pantera and stuff like that um but I wasn't really playing heavy stuff. You know, we'd like cover certain things in the band back then. It was only me, Chris, and Anthony, um, our old drummer, but whatever. I don't want to get into that. So we'd like play some Pantera stuff at band practice and if we played parties or whatever. But as far as any original material, I wasn't writing heavy riffs yet. But once I heard that first corn record in my neighbor's backyard, he had it pumping. And I went over there and I was like, what is this like it just sounded something it was something completely different that album has a very um distinct rawness and crisp to it heavy as hell it's got like the death metal drums like the really high you know snare drum and everything's tight but the guitars were heavy thick but not not too clear but they were clear it was a and obviously the bass tone is you know Try try getting that bass down. Good luck. <laughs> um, yeah. And it was just it just set me on a different path with uh, playing guitar. Um, so when you played the guitar, then I'm assuming you played everything in standard six string. I still do. Yep. I never. I, I never say, like you still do. It hasn't changed. The, the only the only alternate tuning is drop D. You know. Um, but you know, I was I was obviously playing Metallica songs before that. And learning them and that's how i got my rhythm chops up but there was really something about that first corn record where i was like i want to play stuff like this i want to play heavier stuff and um once that happened you know two years later in 97 ivan s came out with the first rg 760 which was the first seven string besides the universe yep and i was like whoa <laughs> you know and i got it down from the rack at, at alto music in middletown new york and the second like my left hand was on it. That's what she said. Oh, um, I was just like, <laughs> wow, like this is cool, you know? And uh, I saved up some money that summer and bought it. And Jimmy has that guitar now, which is funny, but uh, pretty much gave it to him. Stupid. Um, and that basically shaped or put set me on the path of playing heavy music. Um, and then obviously... At the end of the 90s, Jimmy, the drummer, introduced me to um, Meshuggah, uh, played me Future Breed Machine from Destroy, Race, Improve. And at first, I had no idea what those guys were doing. I was like, dude, it sounds like everybody's playing a different song at the same time. Like, it's just what is what is happening right now? Mm -hmm. And then the more and more I heard it, all of a sudden, I was able to, like, hear what they were doing. I was like, holy crap. This is like like mind bending stuff that's going on here. This, how do these guys think of playing stuff like that? Like it sounds like everybody's playing a different, you know, time signature, you know, the polyrhythm stuff. But the majority of Mashuga is actually four four, which is crazy. And once that happened, um, like my mind kind of switched, and it's now like this is obviously years years and years later. But now if I sit down and write riffs. I almost by default write odd time riffs just because it's just natural for me. Um, so that's those are two albums right there that kind of set me on the path of uh, of the guitar player that I turned out to be in right. the, in, the, in the '90s with with that type of metal. Um, you know, there's the Fear Factory stuff that came out in the '90s that I love still. Um, you know, but this is it's already eight thirty. I don't want to talk about nine because I. I'll get I'll get too pumped talking about this stuff. So gotcha. Then there's also Machine Head, Burn My Eyes. 
yeah which has one of the great mixes of all metal there you go false, false flag. flag yes chaos fear i think that's when when chaos fear came out so that came out in 98 so it must have been around 90 maybe the beginning of 98 when jimmy tried introducing me to destroy race improve which came out i think in 95 and i wasn't really getting it and then when he went out and bought chaos fear i think that's when all of a sudden i was like whoa you know this is what is it started to click and then i went back and listened to destroy race improve and i was like this makes sense you know it was like uh uh like trying to do a puzzle you know for a long time and you couldn't you couldn't put fit the pieces together it, they weren't going together and then all of a sudden you like got that one piece that kind of sets the domino effect and now now i i, I could figure this all out so kind of cool that's great man yeah that's awesome thanks false flag thank you dude oh thank you man he has, he has to split but um false flag thank you for all your support man oh man the metal show when he's splitting you rock dude <laughs> <laughs> this is johnny's johnny's channel tony uh it's all good it's all good yes send it to johnny yeah it it, it pays for the channel you know without those without the lights changing you'll see a duck sitting on the side there and th <laughs> this is the truth there. this is the truth you would not get as much content at all without without those super chats because street the the, the uh programmer use Streamyard. they only allow you a certain amount of hours to stream per month and we blow right past that within like two weeks of oh, shows that we do because of tuesday well yeah probably <laughs> probably so and, and so, as far as that goes listen johnny and also I'm, I'm speaking personally from me this is from me johnny allows me number one to hang out with him on these shows it's been almost four years now since i've been hanging out with him doing this and also he allows me to to promote and talk about my band on here which i wouldn't have this type of outlet if, if i if i wasn't on here so that's enough you know i mean obviously if johnny started getting tens of thousands of dollars a month <laughs> wait, a minute, wait a minute gold chains yeah <laughs> the expensive glasses yeah the, the 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 grill gold yeah hardware, gold hardware and all his guitars and it's actually <laughs> gold solid 24 karat gold on his guitar yeah yeah no everything that everything that go that that you guys see that comes into the channel it, it all goes into the channel you know so i'm cool I'm sit, i sit here and i starve but i'm able to we're able to stream this stuff for you guys and um i know this is what you guys want you want more and more and more of the stuff and that's what that's what we're working we're working on too is to be able to bring you more more content on the on the on the channel hey now so, right music it. therapy it's all good. <laughs> and wow. if I wasn't having fun, I wouldn't be doing it. So there's, you know. It's true. It's all good. And this is what I live yeah. for. One, once a month. If it wasn't for this show, I don't know where I'd be right now. <laughs> You'd still be playing golf. Oh, no, you wouldn't because it rained. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right. Let's. Uh... <laughs> Somebody butt me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny, why don't, why don't you start with a few <laughs> albums of the 80s that just just give you the feels that just blow your panties off. Go ahead, go. Just what, metal? metal Anything. Stuff? Anything? Because I don't have a lot. I have some metal albums, but I also don't. So I feel uh, like Van Halen coming on. I mean, obviously Van Halen. I mean, that's, that's, that's the biggie for me. Uh, you know, 5150. Uh, they did consider Van Halen heavy metal at the time, so that is Dude, somewhat you, considered heavy metal. When you look back in those like BMG and Columbia House, uh, you know, catalogs, when you'd pick, you know, buy one the CD 90, and the, for a the, penny or whatever the, the hell, penny, it was. yeah, yeah, like Motley Crue and Van Halen, they were in the heavy metal section, yeah. And I used to be like, yeah. heavy metal, you know, come on, I, I, I would buy, um, because I was a huge Van Halen collector at the time, I had. Every album, every memorabilia, whatever I, I had for a lot of years, 
Um, and I, I would find these books like on metal, on rock, on heavy metal. And I would dig through the stuff to find just the Van Halen content. But there was a lot of Van Halen, you know, uh, articles and, and stories and pictures within these metal books alongside ACDC, Iron Maiden, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about on Tuesdays. Um, but yeah, Van Halen was considered heavy metal for a, a lot of years. Uh, so yeah, obviously all, all, all the Van Halen stuff throughout the eighties. Yeah. Like fruitcake saying, yeah, back in black ACDC. That's, that's a, a big one for me. I was really into ACDC. Uh, when I, I, I tell this story sometimes when I first bought 0812, which again was considered metal, <laughs> yeah, which is like the, one of the most, um, like the least metal Van Halen albums. If you think about it. Yeah. 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 I had I bought that on CD. It had a bonus track on it. I can only hear it if I had a CD. I went out and bought a CD player just so I could listen to that record. Right. So around the same time, I really got into ACDC, and this is something I I don't think I've said this on here. Um, I really got into ACDC, so I I stocked up on all the ACDC albums on CD. And. And this is back when I had, uh, actually, I had a regular standalone CD player with the remote, you know, hooked up to the to the speakers, the receiver on the, in the basement. Did it have the, four, that, the 4X over, what was it called? Uh, the four play? times over sampling or four times something. What was oh, the, four times for, for forwarding, right? I forget what it was. It was some spiel that some of them had on there. 4X something like yeah, for 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 for, uh, for fast forwarding the CDs, you could go two times, four times, kind of like a VCR sometimes, mm. like a VCR with CD players. They had that, and and um, uh, so I had that, and I also had uh, like a Walkman CD player as well, the Discman, a, a Discman type yeah, of thing. I, I had that, and I had a little, it looked like a purse, a little carrying case for my CDs. <laughs> and I remember carrying the, those things around. An but, attache case. Yeah. But at the time, I remember it being all ACDC. Fly on the wall. I mean, every everything you can think of. Uh, this would have been in 1990. 80, well, 88. 88 to, to 90 is when this, this was happening. And, and uh, let me just say a lot of ACDC. So, yeah, 80s. Back in black, definitely. Uh, Def Leppard, Hysteria, 87. That was a huge one, mm -hmm. which again, considered metal. And it's crazy. Those two albums uh, are are like two of the highest selling albums of all time as well. You know, that, that little thing about yeah. um, Hysteria, <clears throat> they, what was it on that, um, that D, the DVD, the, uh, the <laughs> classic albums or whatever it is. They mentioned that they had to sell five million copies to break even from mm -hmm. recording costs. Now, could you imagine nowadays if a band had to sell had to sell five? They, pff, holy cow! No, no, they would have to do something different, like touring proceeds, merch. They would have to do a lot of other no. Things. The record label would would they would drop them before they spent anywhere near. The amount of money that they spent back then that's true because it's not you know people don't uh, well pe maybe people do but people don't realize it's not just like the recording studio and, and engineers and stuff like that and mixing engineers and producers that you pay right like let's just say a band lives in new york and they go to a recording studio in la well obviously there's going to be a, a budget there's going to be per diems that come out of that there's going to be the hotel rooms Yep. Mm -hmm. The hotel rooms for the engineers. So it's a lot of other stuff besides just the studio costs and everything like that. So it's true. I mean, I, think, but, um, I know it's in the 90s, but Corn, when they did follow the leader, they spent like $55,000 just on alcohol. Yep. That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's wow. that's that's, that's and it only took three days to record the album. So. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> man. All right, so John, what what else do you have? Ah, uh, man, the the soundtrack to Spinal Tap. 
<laughs> you know that that was that was another one. I had that. I mean, I mean, it's it's embarrassing to say. I mean, it, I was it was so much Van Halen back then for so many years for me. It's like that was it. You know, that was such a big big thing. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't even. Eighty-eight. I, those are the those. I mean, those are the big ones. ACDC, Def Leppard, Van Halen. I mean, there's probably some other stuff in there. Uh, well, Winger. I hate to say that because I love the saying lo- it. Love the logo that. to this this thing has the thing crossed out, but yeah, the first Winger record was was a big one for me. Um, and then the second one was was big because I I met them. Uh, I I went and saw them on on the the tour for in the heart of the young. I want to mm-hmm. say that record was called. <laughs> I went and I saw them on that tour, and I I met them at a record store. And and I gave uh, uh, Red Beach some good. I had the, that was before I had my own signature guitar picks, but I had these little Fender picks with little uh you know those little star those little foil star stickers that you would get. <laughs> You know, kind of like what's on the the fifty one fifty guitar, or the Kramer, like on the headstock, the one or two stars. Yeah, they they give those out in like in school and stuff like that to kids. Yeah, little yeah. I would put those on my guitar picks to make them different, custom. Plus, when you hold them, it works as a grip as well. And I remember giving those to Red Beach, and he was like, he was looking at, it, he's like, oh, cool, man. He was like, really, really, he was really cool. All those guys were super cool, but then Kip Winger. He he was he was out there, man. Because <laughs> the the girl in front of me in line went to take a picture of him, and it messed up her thing. It didn't flash or something. And she's like, "Oh, can I take it again?" And he's like, "No." He's like, <laughs> he's like, "No." I remember he be, he being kind of rude to her. And then when it, when it was my turn to talk to him, uh, this was right after the the Viva Van Halen Saturday on MTV where they opened up the Cabo Wabo and there was footage of Kip with Rachel Hunter there. If you guys remember. And, and I remember asking him, I'm like, Kip, what'd you think of the Cabo Wabo? And he's like, he's like, ah, I was all right. That was his response to me. Wow. So it, it really, the rest of the band was amazing. He, he just, you know, but who knows? He could have had a bad day. Well, uh, my experience meeting them because uh, my brother and I saw them at the Chance in Poughkeepsie. Oh God, maybe early two thousands, I want to say something like that, and they were mm-hmm. phenomenal. But after the show was over, you know, we went down to the you know in front of the stage, and like there was <clears throat> there wasn't many people waiting to meet them, you know. So what year we was had that? Kip, we got Kip to come down. We actually have a picture with me, and my brother, and. Uh, yeah, what year was that? When I met them was 1990, so it, it was pretty. Oh, they, they were, were opening. Big. They were opening for Kiss when I saw them. Yeah, see, this this so was, was after way after their heyday. I mean, it they were playing the deal. Chance, you know, a, a, a theater with, that we used to play. Um, but like Kip was very, he didn't really say much. You know, it was like, hey, can we get a picture with you? And he's like, yeah. And then we took a picture with him, and he bit, pretty much was like, all right, cool, and then walked off. And then we ended up shooting the S with um, with Reb. He was super cool, but he was like wired, man. He was pumped. And uh, and Rod Morgenstein, their drummer, he was yeah. he was like trying to find a ride home. <laughs> he was like, hey, are you guys going to Long? I gotta find a ride to Long Island. Anybody going? And I was like, Jamie, you want to drive Rod Morgenstein to Long? Do you want to drive him home? He's like, dude, I can't drive Long Island now. Are you crazy? But those two, Reb and 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 Rod, were super nice guys. But Kip, like after we got the picture taken with him, he kind of like you know went off and I guess did his own thing it's, or whatever. It's a, it's the same thing with like with you know those those guys. They're regular dudes. They're musicians. Mm-hmm. Kip Ringer, he, Kip Ringer, Kip. He's the rock star. Yeah, he's the Roth in Van Halen. It's it's a similar type of deal. Jay, what year was this? I it had to be like maybe around 2002 or something like that. I'd have to, I'd have, my brother would probably remember, but, but they, they were awesome. You know, they were, they were really, really good. Um, it was one of the best. I mean, then again, I'm a, I'm a winger fan. So, but they were f- on point, you know, his voice was great. Um, everything, everything was great. 
You know, it seemed like they had a great time. Obviously, Jeannie and I saw Winger down here, uh, maybe 2011 or 12. They played at the House of Blues, and uh, they play with Firehouse. Who Firehouse was better than Winger on 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 stage. They because they played all the hits from the first two albums. You know, Winger played obviously their hits, but they played some of the newer stuff. I don't want to hear the newer stuff, man. <laughs> you know, play, play, play those the first three albums, you know. Play forty eight again. <laughs> <laughs> She's only seventy six. Um, right? Is that enough winger talk? Even though I love it, I I'll talk about winger all night. But... I think yeah, I think we've um, we've hit on winger a little too much. All right. Well, let's. Um, you guys want to know my thoughts on winger, or are we just gonna? Yes. No, we're gonna gloss over it. Oh, okay. I mean, you can um, go ahead and give it quick. My mom says, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. So I think we'll just move on. <laughs> That's, That's no true. Fun. That's no fun. <laughs> that, see, Kip shouldn't have said anything. He should have let the girl take another picture. He should have told me, oh, Cabo was great. Right. See? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of scares me. Like, I, I've said this several times, but I'm petrified of meeting people that, like, I can meet Brad Pitt tomorrow and I have no problem. It's musicians that do it for me, right? So if I met someone I really lick, listen to all the time, or look really up, lick, I really lick all the time, I'd lick them, I would do that as well. But uh, well, it, it would crush me, it really would. So meeting something like like Kip Winger and he's a big bag of D, you know, that would that wouldn't crush me. So well, he wasn't a D to me. It was just yeah. he was he, you know, he probably didn't want to talk to a couple dudes. He probably wanted to talk to some chicks, you know. But anyway, all right. Sure. Should we give uh should we start this out? Start this off here? Yeah, let's do it. All right, you want it? You want me to go first with one? Yeah, go ahead. So I have it was very hard for me to not include two albums from a few different bands. The only is this band honorable mention, or is this like straight top ten? Well, I I have twelve. Okay. But I don't even know if I'm gonna get into the honorable mentions. I'm just gonna go my twelve favorites. So I have I only have two albums from one band, so I'll do my second favorite from this band first. Metallica, Master of Puppets. Um, this album is, obviously, it's considered by many people to be the greatest metal album of all time. I can't argue that. Um, I listened to it the other day again, and it's phenomenal. Like, the songwriting, the structures... The musicianship, it's its all, like, unbelievable. Uh, there's really nothing to say negative about that album, except for, I will say, that, you know, the more and more I hear it year after year, the drums are have that kind of 80s sound. You know, like, the drums kind of sound a little dated to me. I know a lot of people love it, and it's fine. But I... The production of it or the, yeah, the production of the drums. It's, okay. It has that kind of 80s haze, you know, like that almost like as if a uh, but, like a, a, a tissue or something was over, you know, like that reverb -y on the snare and stuff like it's just it's not really my thing. Uh, so but it's, it's still a great like I put it on. I don't complain when it's on. It's just I would almost rather hear that album remixed to sound a little more modern than justice even though justice doesn't have any bass guitar really it's slightly there but barely um but i love how justice sounds and we'll get to that album later so anyway okay. master of puppets one of the greatest not just thrash metal or metal out one of the greatest albums of all time it really is it's up there so gotcha can't argue that yep or what do you got? So number 10 for me, I don't have any honorable mentions. I don't like, I'm not a huge eighties metal guy, but I have a, I love eighties music, uh, which we've talked about. So I'm going to start with number 10, which is not metal at all. Um, number 10, uh, new order substance, <laughs> uh, song, true faith, blue Monday ceremony. Hell Yeah. Definitely not metal at all, and I apologize to everyone who tuned in, tuned in to hear some metal. That's not it, but that album is the shit. Johnny, back me up on this. Which which record? <laughs> <laughs> Substance by oh. uh, New Order. Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. New New Order is definitely uh, another uh, 
Yeah, a lot of that stuff is definitely a, an influence on 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 my music and what I do. You know, absolutely. Jay, what's your thoughts on New Order? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. No. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll go right to number nine then. So we'll just we'll just bypass New Order. Uh, number ten is our uh, nine is uh, Rain and Blood Slayer. Ooh, we might me. have a double on this list, huh? Yeah, um, okay. Angel of Death. That song is the shit. That song is great. <laughs> that it, it's so good. The um, <laughs> the riff. <laughs> The riff, like a minute into the song, that uh, that like breakdown that goes into like the second verse, mm, so good. And obviously, like post mortem into raiding blood, that's just that's yeah. iconic metal right there. Yeah, those those two, you you named it right there, Angel of Death and 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 uh, Raining Blood, like those two songs. They're like staples of of thrash metal, you know. Absolutely. They're like all time classics. Mm-hmm. And that's probably why I might as well follow up. That's one on my list as well. Um, it was tough. I, I almost, I almost chose. Uh, it was it was tough to pick. You know, I almost picked. Was it? Uh, was it South of Heaven? Was it? I'm trying to think what it was. There was another Slayer album. I almost chose, but I didn't, just because of the iconic songs that are on Rain and Blood. And I like the fact that they, whoever's idea was to name the album Rain in Blood, R E I N, and then the song Raining Blood. Whoever's idea that was is brilliant. You know? It's R E I G N. G N. Yeah, I don't know how to spell. I used there to. Now I don't. I got you. Yeah. Um, super cool. Like just little things like that, I always thought was like, that's neat that they did that. You know, they didn't have Agreed. to, but it's cool. Agreed. Yeah. Thanks, Thrash Metal. I appreciate it. We got the uh, grammar police out tonight. <laughs> Johnny, Rain. did you listen to that album, Rain and Blood? No. No, I, I didn't. Um, I, I it's pop. What, what year did that come out? 86. 86. Yeah, I think okay. It's, it's possible I heard it because uh, back in 80, yeah, in 86, 87, I had friends that were huge metal. You know, they were the dudes walking around with the Metallica shirt and the jean vest with all the patches on the back. Yeah. You know, I, I had friends. And uh, the, the mullet. <laughs> the oh, poodle, yeah. The brutal mullet. The mullet and the, the Marlboros and, and, uh, uh, yeah, I'd go to, we'd go to their, go to their house and, and, hang out and, and play records. And so it's, it's possible. I heard some of that. I do remember hearing a lot of Iron Maiden um, and, and always looking at the, the record, the covers and seeing all the different, yeah. all the different covers that they had. And it was, you know, how they're very similar, but different. Um, and then not to get off topic of, of uh, them, but, but Metallica as well. Like, like, uh, you know, justice and the garage days, you know, all that stuff. Hell yeah, garage days. Mm-hmm. Whose turn is it now? Um, well, we just talked about <laughs> Slayer. Um, okay. I, I guess I, I'm, I'm going to go next well, we one. We doubled up. You, you, I did one. Okay. You did two. Then I did one because I, I piggybacked off of yours. So you I figured did. since you're talking about that album, I might as well do the same. So um, let me bring in one of my, let's see. I got some cool ones to choose from here. Um, All right, let's go with, Johnny mentioned Iron Maiden. My favorite Iron Maiden record. And this is a lot of hardcore Iron Maiden fans, one of their least favorite albums from their heyday. And it's somewhere in time. I think Iron Maiden Somewhere in Time is their best album, like hand over fist. It, it's great. It's it's like, I don't know how to explain it. it maybe it, it's because it's the first Iron Maiden album that I actually like sat and listened to. You know, some kid that I played uh, Little League with, um, he was getting into rap music, which it's funny because around that same time period, a lot of my friends from that time, a lot most of them got into rap. 
And I, I, that's when I was kind of really getting into metal and it was like the exact opposite. Like all of a sudden I was getting heavier into music and, and the heavier stuff. <laughs> a lot of my friends were starting to listen to the hip hop. Your, um, your, your pants are getting tighter and their pants yeah. are getting, getting lower. <laughs> yeah, were lower. Mine were getting tighter. It took, me, it took me three minutes to take a pee. You get my pants down, you know, the, the 501. Why did I why did I wear 501 jeans? I don't know. Them shits were tight. But anyway, somewhere in time is amazing. Um, I know a lot of people were PO'd that they started dabbling with the keyboard stuff. Um, keyboards. Keyboards, man. Nobody... <laughs> but it's it to me, the songwriting, the melodies, um, it's just it's great. It's one of uh, one of my favorites, as far as Maiden goes, easily. You know, yeah. Like it's one it's one of those bands that I love the majority of their catalog, but some other bands you're like, well, this is my favorite album from them, but this is a close second. You know, sometimes it's hard to choose. Maiden, <laughs> I love Maiden, but without a doubt, somewhere in time is my end. Say at the same time, Iron Maiden is the band that i've seen the most live i've seen them wow. 27 times oh my holy. god and wow. not not hold on hold on a second not because i i went to 27 concerts to see them it's because when we played Ozfest in 2005 they were the headliner along with ozzy and that Ozfest was was 26 shows uh, and then i saw them in 2007 at the meadowlands in new jersey um but the coolest thing, and obviously I'm, I like Ozzy as well, but Ozzy was not very healthy on that tour. And I would say almost half of the shows, maybe maybe a little less than half, Ozzy would cancel. And Iron Maiden would go from playing an hour and a half to three hours. Damn. And I was pumped about that because they, on, on Ozfest in 05, whenever they had the hour and, a, hour and a half show, they played the majority of their older stuff, you know, like from their first two records. That I'm not really a big fan of, but the 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 shows where Ozzy canceled, they dabble with the later stuff too, and I was like, yes, you know, it was it was awesome. What what did the crowds think of Ozzy canceling all those shows? I mean, were they like, uh, we got another hour of Maiden? That's fine. You know, I don't I don't really know. Um, Do people go to Ozfest specifically to see Ozzy? Or is it well, I think see... on, on that one, I'd say a lot of people went to see Maiden, but I, I would think a lot of people would would went to see Ozzy. But it was kind of known before the tour even started that he was that he wasn't very healthy and that he might not play every night. So um, did they? I hate to say this, but you know the the shows that he didn't play. Did they change the name from Oz Fest to Oz Left? Oh, or Oz <laughs> Less, Oz Less, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, the the majority of the other bands that we were friendly with on that tour, you know, I hate saying this publicly, <laughs> but they were kind of excited of the shows that Ozzy canceled because Maiden was going to play for three hours and, and they were on fire live. Like even now you, you watch clips of, of Maiden playing and Dickinson is still on top of his game, man. But 05, he was they play three hours and he was like a 25 year old kid out there just nailing every note, you know, running around the stage and they were just so entertaining and so good. When yeah. you watched the shows, were you in the crowd or are you on the stage? Uh, side the crowd. Stage? I wasn't, that was, uh, that was the first, the main stage. We were second stage. So we weren't, I don't, I don't know if we were allowed. We probably were, but at the time I, I was, I didn't really, you know, oh, because I can do that, I'm going to do that. I kind of, you know, stayed back and didn't really, you know, because we'd see, you know, the guys from, uh, there was a couple shows we did with, uh, who's going to call it? Uh, Guns N' Roses without Axel with uh, Scott Weiland. Uh, oh, uh, Revolver. Revolver. oh so there was yeah, a show yeah. or two with, with them. And I remember seeing a couple of them, like we saw Slash in the in catering and stuff like that. But I never like went up to him to say hi because I'm like, what am I going to say? Like, hey, cool, you know, you're Slash. <laughs> you know, I was like, these guys, I don't want, I didn't want to bother anybody. So I kind of, you know, we kept to ourselves and stuff. So 
So I don't know if I was able to, I probably wasn't allowed to go on the side of the stage for Maiden. I mean, those guys, you know, they had their crew and everything. So, and I never wanted to, like I say, like overstep any boundaries and like, you know, do sure. anything with anybody piss anybody yeah, off. Little laminate. You're like, hey guys, I got to use the bathroom. Let me through. You know? Yeah, let so me let me into your dressing room. Real important question then. If you saw Slash in catering, did he have his bouffant like in his face, like in his mouth, or like did he look different? Or he had a um, like me, like the back. He was copying off of me, you know. No, <laughs> he had a backwards uh, baseball hat on. But he he looked cool, man. He looked he looked the part. He still looked like Slash, you know. Had the glasses, the big aviators on, you know, the Converse and stuff. He looked like he does on stage that dude doesn't never ages because you can't see his face yeah. his hair is like right he's either got there, a, right. a hair in his face with a hat on or he's got glasses that are this big so he can't you know i think he went to high school with um what was his face a blink uh, lenny, lenny kravitz oh really <laughs> yeah all right so there's my maiden story so i saw him 26 <laughs> times on Ozfest, and once that i actually paid for to see Okay. What do you got? What's next? What's next for you? Uh, number eight, Faith No More, the real thing. Wow. I love Mike Patton. I'm a big fan. I think we talked about Mr. Bungle. Love Mr. Bungle. Uh, especially last year with that new album that came out. Dope. But um, yeah, Faith No More. That was, you know, I, I was born in 81. So, damn. So, you know, um, like 86, Rust in Peace came out, right? Master of Puppets. Rust in Peace came out in 90. Uh, did it? Oh, yeah. uh, Peace Cells. I'm sorry. Peace Cells came out in 86. There you go. And then, uh, yeah, so Peace Cells, Master, Among the Living was 87, I believe. And then Rain and Blood was 86. Clearly before my time, because right around then is when I started getting to new kids on the block. But yeah, um, <laughs> we, won't, we won't talk about that. That's, that's we'll another. Thing. Johnny, it. we gotta schedule another night for uh, that's a, yeah, for yeah, yeah, boy bands. Yeah, boy bands, shiny beans Thursdays, boy band show. Um, <laughs> Thursdays but, um, at eight. <laughs> but I remember being a little, little kid and um, seeing the video for Epic and the outro. I loved it with the. Guitar, and I'm sorry, the piano playing, the fish. Mm -hmm. Oh, the fish. The fish just dying. I just, I, I no, love it. No, no, no. Hold on a second. They were asked about that. And they said that part was filmed in slow, filmed. You see it in slow motion lasting forever. But they said that fish was out of water for probably 10 seconds. And then they put him back in. Hopefully they did that. And it died. What were they going to say? Oh, yeah, we let that fish die right there. <laughs> just gasping for air. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, um. And listen to that album now. It's fantastic. Like Zombie Eaters. Oh, it's, um, it's a great album. Surprise You're Dead. Like, so good. It's such a good album. So, um, yeah, number eight, Faith No More. Uh, the Real Thing. Wow. If, if I would have uh, remembered that one, I would have put it on my list as well. Because that's a very another one of those iconic albums that, you know, kind of. Uh, it, it might be one of those ones that, you know, especially with Epic, you know, kind of getting that rap rock thing going yep. you know uh that and uh mike Patton is one of the most versatile vocalists yeah and he can do the he can do death Anything. metal stuff he can sing mm -hmm. so yeah that's, that's a great one that's one i missed off of my list i remember um the cassette was a clear cassette but the you know that that magnetizing strip that prevented, I guess, from you know it rubbing on the plastic or whatever right. the hell it was. It was yeah. blue inside the clear cassette. I'd always thought that was kind of neat. Hmm. That's right. Uh, <laughs> all right, do you want me to go or do you want to go? Um, I'll go. Next okay. one. We'll, we'll go to, we'll do like Snake, if I may. And be, by the way, like and subscribe. We didn't do a roll call, but oh well, we'll maybe do it before we leave tonight. Yeah, we, we can do it. So like and subscribe. We still have some cool albums to get to. And share so, the links and all that stuff. Tell your friends about these shows. <laughs> I'll do seven and then we can do roll call. How's okay. that sound? Okay. Number seven is an album that you already said. Master of Puppets. Metallica. The um, Battery. Master. Sanitarium. Just, just iconic metal songs. Like, What else is there to say? It's Master of Puppets. It's fantastic. Yep. 
Yeah, it's I know. just so good. Damage Incorporated. Mm-hmm. You know, it is Metallica's like last thrash album. You know, it kind of with Justice, they kind of left the thrash stuff behind, but you know, whatever. That's it. You want to say anything else about Master? What else is there to say? Just go listen to it. If you've never listened to it, I don't know what you're doing. You're <laughs> watching yeah, it. If you haven't heard Master Puppet, right? <laughs> you know, I, I wish you ever watched those reaction videos on YouTube? Of course. I think they're hilarious. I was trying to think of why I liked what I liked watching them. I know why, but go ahead. I, I figured it out. Mm-hmm. Um because <clears throat> everybody wishes they could listen to some of their favorite songs for the first time again. Mm-hmm. And it's it's great seeing someone's reaction to hearing a song that I love, them hearing it for the first time. And I don't know what it is about that. I don't know why I enjoy it, but I do. You know, and sometimes it's it's you know, people that do reaction videos to metal. You know, obviously they didn't grow up listening to heavy metal. They grew up listening to other kinds of music. So this is almost like a so like a completely different thing that they're hearing that they've never been exposed to before. So it's really mm-hmm. cool getting somebody that like their reaction and you know, especially when they're like reading the lyrics, because you know, I grew up with this. Once I got into the heavy stuff, my parents or my dad especially was kind of worried about the lyrical content to a lot of this stuff. And I, I've told this story before, but I brought home my next album that I'm going to talk about, <laughs> I brought home, I borrowed a cassette from a friend and the band is Halloween and it was Keeper of the Seven Keys. You know, they have part one and part two. I'm just going to lump them both together because you can, right? Why not? It's your list. You can do whatever you want. That's right. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I brought that tape home and my dad, I forget how we saw the cover or whatever it was. Maybe I had it on and he's like, what is that? And this is about the time that my grade started to plummet. And it wasn't because I was listening to devil music. It was because all of a sudden I was like obsessed with listening to music. Like I'd go into my room to do my homework and I would just sit there and listen to music and just be like, just absorb it. And I couldn't yeah. concentrate on my, on my schoolwork. Mm-hmm. So anyway, he saw the album cover, saw the name of the band was Halloween. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> give me that, you know, are the lyrics in there? I said, yeah. He's like, let me, let me see that. So I hear him in his room reading the lyrics like out loud right (laughs) and he comes back into my room maybe 10 or 15 minutes later and he's like he goes this is actually very positive like like lyrics these are this isn't anything about bad stuff or the devil he's like these are actually very positive lyrics and you know i'm fine with you listening to this good thing he didn't i didn't give him like uh you know, number of the beast. <laughs> you know, I saw that album cover. I'm like, what are you? What is this? You know, six, right. six, six, the whole intro to that song. You know, yeah, or really Slayer like, album. But um, <laughs> so anyway, Keeper of the Seven Keys by Halloween. Uh, you know the, in my opinion, is like the dawn or the, you know, that power metal type of stuff. Like that's where I was kind of introduced. Like I liked Halloween before I listened to Maiden. Uh, and I still listen to those albums. All these albums that, that I'm naming, at least, I still listen to these to this day. Like, you know, it's not like I put them on. I'm like, oh, yeah, these were great back then. No, these are still albums that I always listen to. Sure. Um, and I get pumped, man. You know, Jeannie, not so much when I put on the Halloween stuff. But uh, <laughs> she's like, oh, my God, what are you doing <laughs> to me down here? But no, it's, it's, it's great stuff, man. Definitely. It really is. So Keeper of the Seven Keys. And they have a new album that's out, actually. And they have uh, the old singer, which is Michael Kiske, I think you, you say his name. They have him back, as well as the guy, I guess, that's been their singer for a while. And they, you know, trade off parts. And I think that's that's really cool. I'm going to have to listen to it more. But go ahead. Good. No, I was about to sneeze, but I'm, gonna, I'm all right. Why don't, why don't you uh, go through, uh, do a roll call? Oh, okay, roll call. So... I, th- I know yeah. we had like we just had sixty eight hundred people watching. So everybody, tell us where you're from, and then I'll. Uh... Oh man, there's not many people chatting in the chat. I mean, we have all, at least sixty five watching, but not many people contributing in the chat room. So we got yeah. Ben Tom, Browns fan, Guitar Samurai One, Amanda Coombs. Hi, Amanda. 
uh, Hal Face, Hellstorm, Johnny Bean, Keith Campbell, Mary Bosom. Hello there. Nightbot, Vistalite, 1972. Um, I'm in there. Anybody else? Anybody else? Six strings and ten fingers. <laughs> and everybody else. If you're not chatting, that's fine. You're just listening to what yeah, we're saying rest. here. You're just, uh, you know. Just creeping oh. in the shadows. There we go. I see some names. Hey, Six Strings and Ten Fingers is from Illinois, Brian. That's where you and I are from. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. Greg Grimm is here. Cameron Brown, what's up? We're talking about Cameron's favorite type of heavy me of metal, heavy metal. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Brown fans from Cleveland. That's a shocker. Cleveland. Hello, <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Campbell, when are you going to start mentioning Deep Purple and Blue Chair? Not today. <laughs> Not that's, today. On different, that's on a different note. <laughs> all right, I'll go with, um, I'll start another one. All right, all right go ahead, man. Let's see. I'm trying to choose, pick and choose where I want to list some of these. Too uh, late, Cameron yeah. Brown already brought up Slayer. Yeah. Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> um all right here we go one of johnny's friends and you instantly know what album well, what band this is this is another one that i don't think this is a lot of hardcore testament fans favorite testament album which one practice what you preach i think is hands down their best album why it's got the production i think is really really good i think some of the other albums, especially around that time period, suffer from the production. Whereas Practice What You Preach, the guitars are heavy as hell. The bass sounds like a metal bass. You know, some some of the songs, the, the kick drum sounds like he has a tack hammer on the beater. But it's like it's super clicky, you know. But other than that, man, it's it's God, it's such a great, great album. Souls of Black is great thrash metal, but again, the production, those guitars are like. God, what, what what kind of amps were you using? And how well, high did you have? He had the present on like twenty. You know, what year did that record come out? Preach, yeah, eighty nine. Okay, yeah. No thrash metal. I I know all about Testament, man. Because when I was uh, when I was in school, every day I'd go to school, and this kid, uh, every day, he'd come to my locker. Johnny, have you heard Testament? Souls of Black. You heard this? You heard this? And he played for me, you know, and the, the Walkman. I hear it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then literally a couple, a few years that's, later. That's, that's cool, but do you have the treble like on 10 or something? Like what? what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, are those crates? Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> and literally a few years later, I'm working at a guitar store. And the guy that teaches guitar in the back is Alex Golnick. He had just left Testament. And he was local. He literally just lived a few blocks away. And and so he was teaching lessons at the store. And I I, I met him and I knew who he was because this buddy of mine is always like, you got to check out Testament. And um, it sucks because I, I got his autograph for this friend of mine and I could never find that guy again, the friend. So I still have it somewhere. I have this little flyer for uh when alex's uh, bands after testament he would do the, he played in these local bands these bands that he was doing and it, it so if i could ever find that kid put on an apb he, you know <laughs> he'd probably think it's pretty cool that that i uh became friends with this dude and and had mentioned him to him and and you know i mean it's such a it's such a small world but yeah it's crazy I know you're talking about Crate Amps. Wait, 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 wait. That, music, that music crate amp? Amp says, got to go do yoga with my sweetie later. You mean sit behind her while she's doing yoga? <laughs> music therapy. Dude, we, we got to get together, man. Uh, I'll be up in Walnut Creek. I usually go up Mondays. I know I'll be up there on a on a Wednesday uh, coming up. But yeah, music therapy last night. We need to get together because he has uh, my birthday present for me. Oh, so that's why you want to you want to see him. <laughs> um, it'll be tricky though because it's it's vinyl, it's the new uh, Mammoth WVH vinyl that he, he got for me. And he's going to give that to me, but because of the if it's too hot, you can't have vinyl like in the car. So yeah, it'll turn into 
we got to figure uh, that out. Whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So practice what you preach, man. Is uh, it's it's great. It really is. So, what were you gonna say about crate amps? I see one back there. You see one? There it is. Which oh, one yeah. is that? A blue voodoo? Where the hell they are? I have no idea. Excalibur. Uh, yeah, I th- it is the Excalibur. Yep. Dude, I had one of those, and I did not use the distortion at all. <laughs> I think my um, metal my metal zone pedal sounded better than the yeah. distortion on that amp. So <laughs> I bought this stack. I don't know about twenty years ago from my friend Steve. He um, had a relationship with a stripper that he needed money for. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I forgot why, but he was selling it. And I'm like, I, I need a new amp. Cause I had one of those practice amps. Like um, I, I forgot when I bought my first Fender and uh, like not, not a Fender, it was a Squire. I take that back. It was a Squire. And I had one of those real small boxy amps that sounded like crap. Yeah. So he's like, you want my crate? I was like, yes. So I've had it ever since. And, um, and it still sounds like, it still sounds like a crate. That THR 10X up there probably sounds way better. Yeah. So well, I, I know I, it does, but yeah. Yeah. So um, I've been playing through that. But it's in my room. I'm, I'll get rid of it eventually. So. <laughs> no, really. I mean, crate amps, there's, you know, the thing is, it's a great, um, it's a great first amp is what it is. Or, or, or if you or just play, amp. or if you play, you know in your room it, that it's great for that's what it's that's what it, they're great for right you know and since uh i have some slipknot items behind me i might go with the orange stack jim root plays that so whatever jim root does i'm all for it oh orange amps yeah oh i love orange amps man he's got his own signature right yep there you go awesome all right so what do you got all right Number, where are we? Number six. Number six. Purple Rain by Prince. All right, you can talk about. Th- I love it, but I'm gonna nice. go pee real fast. You can. <laughs> I was in a metal mood, and you zapped me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, I I grew up on that man. That was. Uh, I mean, there was the movie, there mm-hmm. was the, the soundtrack. Right. Just That's- the. The production of that record is amazing to me. Like it didn't sound like anything that I ever heard before. Like I think the quality of it, the songwriting was to me was definitely before its time. Like when Doves Cry, that song mm-hmm. is amazing. Um, mm-hmm. I would die for you. Purple Rain, let's go crazy. Like there's just banger after banger on that record. It's so good. And um, Prince yeah. is one of the most underrated well pe- a lot of people think and he's an amazing guitarist right but no one ever puts him into like the top like echelon of guitarists but eric clapton said the best guitarist he's ever seen hands down is prince that is the best compliment ever eric clapton says you were the best guitarist ever that's amazing you know um that that album is just it's fantastic so yeah yeah hellstorm yeah okay i i, I was kidding I, I am 29 i didn't actually grow up on that but i've <laughs> i've heard of it yeah no no man no mtv in 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 the 80s there was there was nothing like it you would get prince uh michael you know i mean all all this stuff mm-hmm. such a such a, a collection of of uh of music but no, no, Prince, his guitar playing. Oh, he's definitely one of. He doesn't get the credit for being one of the right. top guitar players. Uh, yeah, everyone thinks he's a weirdo, which he is. But um, <laughs> yeah. what she was, I'm sorry. But musician, amazing. And um, there's a really cool. After the show, everyone check out Prince and Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith does like this stand up if i may at a a college and talks about meeting prince and there's just a vault of music that he has hundreds of songs that he's never released completed albums just is never he's like 
I don't think it's good enough. I'm never going to release it. And mm -hmm. um, he's just a weird dude. What a weird dude, but an amazing musician and Purple Rain. Awesome. What do you think, Jay? The second verse in, in the song Purple Rain um, is actually taken from a live performance of the song that he did before he recorded the song. Really? Somebody did a video, and they actually have the live footage, or at least the live audio. And on the album, if you have headphones on and you listen, right after he says one of the lines, I forget what it is, you can actually hear somebody in the crowd like yell hmm. from the live performance. And then this person put it on, you know, and like kind of a beat it back and forth. Mm -hmm. And it's the exact same take or the same line from that, from that live performance. They took the take from the live performance and put it on the album, which I thought, I think stuff like that is awesome when that happens, you know, because they probably tried in the studio to get it. And, you know, whether it's the producer or Prince himself, it's like, you know what? I can't get the vibe from that live live performance. All right, well, screw it. We'll try to do that and, you know, put it in there. And it worked, obviously. So was it the vocals that was put in or is it the whole? Just, just the vocal. Just the just vocal. Okay. So obviously they recorded a multi-track of that, of that live performance. All right, let's get back to metal. And also, sorry, guys. <laughs> Keith Campbell beat a creep. This is, this is my list. So uh, not everything is metal. And there's going to be another album I'm going to discuss. It's definitely not metal. So, all right. So just prepare yourself. Go ahead, Jay. <laughs> all right, well, I got, a, I got a good one that I'm almost positive that Brian has never listened to before. And Johnny, too, obviously. If it's Winger, then you're probably... No, it's right. not Winger. It's... I'll show you the album cover as well. Onslaught in Search of Sanity. This no. album is great. Talk about thrashy guitars. Um, uh oh, Johnny, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You're not your scammer's on. <laughs> no, I, I was I was uh stretching. No. All right, bye, Jay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. I don't know what happened. I think you offended him, so he's out. <laughs> so, there no, I, I, I've never seen... Uh, what'd you do? I don't know. All of a sudden, it said something went wrong, so I just refreshed it. Hopefully, that works. Gotcha. Am I good? Damn, son. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Who's bowling? Yeah. New England thunderstorms. Yeah, so anyway, on Onslaught in Search of Sanity. <laughs> Check out the album. It's great. Some really good guitar stuff on that album. Um, so, I, I know nothing about that band. Yeah, I mean, it's their. In my opinion, it's their only good album. I think the singer left after that album came out or something. But if any any of you metalheads that are like into that thrash stuff, check it out. It's it's really really good. Okay. Cool. What else you got? Um, I'll go to not an obscure one. I'll go to an ob obscure one next. Uh, so we're going to go with my second favorite Anthrax album. Yes, I said my second favorite Anthrax album. We're it's talking a, Among the Living, everybody. 1987. It's the most fun. I think it's the most fun thrash metal album ever recorded you can tell those guys were having a ball some of the mm -hmm. lyrical content is fun it, it doesn't take itself too seriously um a lot of the stuff is super enjoyable to play on guitar you know on Saturday night live before google really started cracking down on the copyright stuff i'd play some of these riffs on the show and they're just fun to play you know there's there's music that's great to listen to and then there's music that's great to listen to and fun as hell to play. And a lot of it is the, the you know, not that, not that the stuff is simple in essence, but a lot of these guitar riffs, they're not impossible to play, but they're just really, really fun to play. And they're like, yes, yeah, it's, it's like, hell yeah, man. You know, one of those things. <laughs> so that album, and that's, that's the one album that was on that half a cassette that 
I got from my brother back in probably 87 after it came out. And I had no idea who it was until I became an Anthrax fan a few years later and was like, holy cow, side two, I heard a couple years ago. <laughs> I had no idea who it was. Uh, sure. So, but Among the Living. And for those of you wondering what my favorite Anthrax album is, it's Persistence, Persistence of, time. of Time. Oh, yeah. But that came out in 90, so I couldn't include it. Sure. Keith. Keith Campbell. No, there's a guy in the chat. No, I saw. I see what you're saying. No, he thought you were telling him to beat it. Yeah, because you said Keith Campbell, and then you said beat it, creep. There's a guy named Beat It Creep. He was mentioning his name. After oh, yeah. he said your name, he said his name. That's what happened. <laughs> it's all good, man. That's awesome. And Christopher Christopher Live Soa says, uh, Rust in Peace. <laughs> Rust in Peace would have been on my list, but it came out in 1990. So we're doing 80s. Sure. So we couldn't, we couldn't do it. Yeah. 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 That's one of those ones I think. A lot of I think a lot of metal fans think that came out in 1989 or something like that, but it, it didn't. It, right on the cusp there of 90. So, sure. Yep. And, so, and I don't have any Megadeth on this list because Rust in Peace is the first Megadeth album that I like from them. The stuff agreed. prior, very raw. The mix, the production's crappy. Um, Dave Mustaine's voice really wasn't where it, where it got to on Rust in Peace. Right. Uh, and obviously. Nick Menz and and, uh, and Marty Friedman, may, you know that's the classic lineup of Megadeth yeah. that I that I like. So agreed. Yeah, hundred percent. So my got? number my number five is Among the Living by Anthrax. <laughs> wow, look at that! That yeah. was perfect. It was. It, it was great. Uh, Among the Living Indians caught in a mosh. You, you, I, you said it. It's. It's a it's a fun album, but it's dope as dope as hell. It's great. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And that's my favorite Anthrax album. But they, I can't argue with that. I, I, can't I argue love that. That's you know. I think that's most Anthrax fans' favorite album is uh is Among the Living. But and if you watch the um uh the live concert from mm -hmm. that era, I think it's from eighty eight or maybe late eighty seven. It's a nice effing video or something like that. Backwards, evil, whatever the hell. Right. It's they're awesome. Yeah. They are just you could that's the thing. It's like you watch them play live and they were having a great time. They were. Uh, Keith, is Keith still here? He's leaving. Keith, he wasn't talking to you. There's a guy in the chat named Beta Creep. <laughs> he had mentioned your name because I saw I heard him say that and then I saw what he had said. No, it, it sounded like Keith Campbell beat it creep. He was talking to a guy named Beat It Creep in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Keith Campbell. Definitely I was I wasn't no I never mean anyone. <laughs> That's like Actually, there was there's you can look it up on YouTube. There's a uh, there's a video. It was actually from out here, from San Francisco, of uh, of a news anchor. It's called News Anchor Goes Crazy, or something. <laughs> and it starts out with the guy. He says he says, "Hey, uh, I'm so and so. Dana is off tonight. He was stabbed and left for dead." Yes. And what he's doing is he's saying Dana is off. Period. The next story should have started. He was stabbed. <laughs> so, but it sounds like the guy saying his anchor was was murdered. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's, yeah, that's from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, Keith, if you're still here, man, none of us on this, well, at least us, I guess I'll speak for us three. We would never say anything to kind of like, you know, unless you did it to us, then, then hey, gloves are off. But, you know, none of that stuff is coming from us. We're, we're, uh, we're cool cats, man. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's a guy named Peter Creep in the chat. That, that's what the. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. All right. So um, speaking of Metal Wednesday, my number four that I'm going to get into, Music for the Masses, Depeche Mode. Yeah. Yeah, Jay, tell me tell me your thoughts about Depeche Mode. I, I know I listened to it enough last month when you were talking about this freaking <laughs> album. Um, or a different, I'm, probably a different album. I guess it would have been. Yeah, no, this is um eighty seven, I believe. Uh, Never let me down again is 
my favorite Depeche Mode song ever. That song's great. Um, Behind the Wheel, Strange Love. They're so good. They're one of my favorite bands. I, I love Depeche Mode. <sighs> <laughs> um, we can, uh, so that was my five was uh, among the living number four is music for the masses to fetch mode. All right, Jay, right, what cool. do you got? All right, cool. Thank God. <laughs> I'm going to save that one for last. Let's go with it. Let's go with another one. Since we're, since I, my last one was anthrax. Let's go with a little bit of a uh, storm troopers of death. Speak English or die. How about that? Another great one, fun album to listen to, goofy Thanks stuff. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of those riffs are just straight out of the uh, '80s thrash playbook, you know. And I think a lot of that stuff might have been, you know, I know like some of the MOD stuff was like leftover Anthrax riffs, maybe, and I think some of the SOD stuff as well that Charlie had laying around. Um, but it's just it's good stuff, man. I remember my brother bringing home the cassette. Maybe I think it was one of his, one of the guys he was in a band with or something at the time. Brought brought the cassette over, and I remember listening to it and giggling, you know, at some of the lyrics and some of the the the, uh, the bits that they'd have on there. But it was always like like moshing, yeah. You know, like R two R three says, SOD riffs are mosh pit material. It really is. You know, you could see, uh, you know, um, Billy Milano shit kicking. You know, and doing the <laughs> all that stuff, and it's just it's just cool stuff, you know. So yeah, I've always I've always dug that. You imagine if they release an album now called "Speak English or Die"? Oh my god! You know that that's one thing that that drives me nuts about uh, this whole thing, you know, the whole cancel culture thing. Now is like, you know, you have a band that has, and a lot of it is tongue in cheek. You know, it's not like it's the S Sergeant D type of thing. He's that type of person that is, you know, thinks like that. And it's it's just a different thing. But everyone now, if you say something the wrong way, or even if the context is not that, if the name of it is wrong, or if you say something, even though the context isn't there, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're instantly this, or you're instantly that. And I think that's BS. Yep. Agreed. Yep. It's kind of like um, you've said it before. We, you and I talk about it privately is – now a days with music you have to have an angle or you're being interviewed about your political beliefs or things that have nothing to do with entertainment or music and you know i've talked about i hate it um you know i love slipknot i don't want to hear Corey taylor's political views no offense to him smart dude i just don't care i might agree with you and i might not i just don't care and yep. I don't want to hear it. And if I want to talk to you individually about it, that's cool. But I don't I don't need celebrities telling me what I should or shouldn't like. I'm all set on that. Well, that, and, that's that's yeah, go ahead. No, I'll let you I'll let you finish. No, it's just it's frustrating in, in bands nowadays. I don't want to use any bands specifically name them, but they're getting pushed because of perhaps who's in the band that might be different than other bands. It's not about the music. It's about, you know, what can we push from a journalistic standpoint with this band? And they're not necessarily a, a good band, but they're getting all the play because, oh, this person plays guitar or the singer is a little different. You know what I'm saying? Hate it. Yeah. I don't like it either. And then, you know, like, like you said, everybody has their own, you know, you, you have, you're free to say whatever you want to say. But when they get out there on on their uh, soapbox and like basically, if you disagree, if you have a different point of view than I do or a different belief, you're an idiot. And it's like, wait, wait a minute, dude. Just because you think that doesn't mean you're right, and because I believe something does it doesn't mean I'm right either. That's right. just what I believe, and I think no one, you know. And I I hate that stuff. And I've said this on the show before, Johnny. I think last or two Saturdays ago about the whole like, you know. Maybe it's just because I'm getting older now. It's like I don't care what people I'm fans of because of their music. I don't care what their beliefs are about th other things. And especially it's the divisiveness as well. These things that a lot of these musicians are talking about and, and that are being covered by music media or music websites and news, they're things that are dividing their fans, that are getting their fans attacking each other. 
Mm -hmm. And as a musician that has a, a small band, I guess the last thing I want is our fans, me to say something publicly and then our fans to go at each other. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want that. That's the dumbest thing. Right. Ego. Is it, is it because, because, uh, not that we're old, I guess we are, but you know, now that we're older, like if you were like younger and you just got into a band, if they had said something like back then that that would kind of make like, you're such a fan influence. You know what I'm saying? It influences you. And maybe you would think, yes, you know what I'm saying? But now it's, it doesn't. Well, I I remember years ago, I I said something, I don't know if it was an, with an interview or if it was just a conversation with somebody. And I said, I think it was before an interview started, they asked about, you know, what, what do you want to talk about? What do you not want to talk about? And I said, excuse me. I said, I don't want to talk about politics because I don't want some young fan, a 13 year old fan, like believing something, taking something that I said and believing it just because somebody, they, someone they look up to, that's their beliefs. Like, I don't want to be that person that people are, mm-hmm. you know, it, let me influence you with my music. Don't let, I don't want to influence you with, with my beliefs about stuff that's outside of that. Right. And I just think it's, a, I don't know if it's an ego thing with a lot of these people. And maybe, like I said before, it's because I'm older and I don't really care what these people's personal beliefs are with stuff anymore. Maybe I used to, because I know I probably did. But now I'm just like, I don't care. Just, I want to listen to your music. I don't want to listen to your political or, you know, this and that type of stuff, you know? Agreed. Like, I guess if you're being interviewed and you're asked a question and you feel compelled to answer it in your way, I guess that's one thing. But if you go to see a band and they're pontificating on stage about what you should be thinking, yeah. uh-uh, wrong. Kind of like, and you, Jane, Jay and I have talked about this ad nauseum, but in regards to, let's say, football, I want to watch football because of the athleticism of the, you know, athleticism and the game and like support, you know, I'm a Chicago bears fan. I want to watch that. It's not necessarily, I don't agree or disagree with your political beliefs. That's fine, mm-hmm. but do it on your time. And if I was an owner of an NFL team, I'm like, you work for me. You're not going to take any political stance because again, you're a commodity. People are purchasing and watching what you're doing. Why would you offend anyone from either side, Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. Same thing, like you come into my office, someone will be like, I hate Trump. I'm like, okay. Someone like, I hate Obama. I'm like, okay. Like, I'm, you're not gonna get anything from me. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, that's awesome. I'm not gonna get into it. I sell insurance. So that's it. Well, you know? that's the thing. When you watch sports, <laughs> you're watching for entertainment. And of course, mm-hmm. you know, as a fan, you feel like you're, a, you're, you feel like almost a part of that, you know? But I, that's the thing. Like, I don't, I don't really care what these guys have to say about anything. I just want to see them win. Yeah. You know, and I'll support them as far as that type of stuff. But like, I don't know, maybe it's Mm -hmm. like I said, I'm becoming an old fuddy duddy, but I watch football and baseball for football and baseball, not other stuff. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And as as far as myself, as any, by that, anybody that I look up to, whatever they say, you know, I take it all in. I I like to learn uh, about about people, and 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 uh, so none of it really bothers me unless it's really bad. You know, unless uh, you know, we probably shouldn't get into this. But no, you know, unless you're, you're, you're you're you know Bill Cosby, you know, who just, who's getting who's getting released? Did you yeah, see that? Yeah, I heard. Okay. <laughs> Jello pudding pop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if it's really bad, whatever it is, then it's like, yeah, that's not cool. But I could care less about Mickey Mouse talking about who we voted for. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't bother me. And that's like I said before, if you want to say that, that's fine. But I have a problem with with uh, you know these entertainers getting out there, like I said before, on a soapbox and basically saying, if you don't agree with me, you're this or you're that or you're this or you're that. I don't like that. That's divisiveness, and I don't think you want your fans. Um, number one, mm-hmm. it's basically split 50-50 nowadays. So you're going to have half of your fans thinking you're an idiot, right. and the other half agreeing mm-hmm. with you and then thinking the other half of your fans are idiots too. That's so how it is anyway, though. 
that that's because now because of the internet and Twitter and how anybody can say anything anytime because of shows like this. Right. That's how it's going to be. You can't. No, nope, nobody's going to agree with you 100 percent no matter what it is i know and that's fine like i said before like i have my own beliefs about things but again i'm not going to tell you you're wrong if you disagree with me you have your own like that's that's the beauty of 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 this country and this world (laughs) that we can have an opinion about something and disagree and be fine with it i think that's that's a beautiful thing do you want everybody feeling the same way and thinking the same no there should be people that feel differently about things. God, but it's, but it's yeah, crazy. Getting this hot. <laughs> I know. So I, I think Jay, you let's did, go live. <laughs> I, I know uh, you discussed this before, Jay. When we were interviewing to be with Adrenaline PR for Gizmachi, and and I think you said this too. They were like really looking for angles, not in a negative way, but in a positive way to like promote Gizmachi and like, Hey, what, you know, tell us about yours. Like, what else can we discuss besides the music? And <laughs> Jay was more of like, it's about the music. That's all it's about. And that's all we want to be about, which is great. But in 2021, people are oh, looking no. for, you know, different aspects to really promote, you know, music as opposed to just the music. So it's pretty, that was pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I think part of it too is like, nobody in the band is really that interesting anyway. So like none of us, none of us are like rock stars and we don't do anything that's like, uh, like illegal. border borderline illegal. You know what I mean? Too, too much. So, yeah. Like I never wanted to be that person. So how many of you guys were in prison? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, cause, uh, it, Cause it's, it's more about, I mean, it's, it's more than just music now. Now it's everything. And it's, I get it. I mean, even when you look at those old, you know, heavy metal and hard rock magazines back in the day with your favorite bands, it was always the guys that looked like rock stars. Those were the ones that were like you gravitated to. Like, wow, look, look at that picture of, of Eddie and Dave standing next to each other, like the cops are gonna bust them. It was just cool, but <laughs> I I can't I can't fake that. I don't want to put out this facade that I'm like this rock star attitude dude and like wear certain clothes and get tattoos all over my arms. Like that's not me. So I, I wouldn't. And that's the thing. Like nobody that's you though. <laughs> no, I'm saying that's not me. I, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, it's, I don't, I've never had one. I don't want one and it's fine that other people do, but I just, um, I don't, you know, it's not me. Nobody in my band has tattoos. It's weird. Um, but there's nobody in the band also that really does anything. That's like, you know, cool to talk about. Right. You know, so yeah, that's why you got to fake stuff. You yeah, know, you, I, you, 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 you sign that. on, and then you go out and you become your own paparazzi, and you get your your neighbor to film you. You know, yeah, digging through the trash or, or whatever it is. So when um, we were working with uh, Adrenaline on promoting Omega Collide, so I just said that Jay was in like Bang Bros videos to get a little push. So it was pretty good. <laughs> a lot of push. <laughs> A lot of push. We're fishing for the push. <laughs> All right, so l- let's get back. Let's get back to uh, a lot of pushy, eighty yeah. <laughs> stuff. All right, so I think I ended with uh, Depeche Mode. So we'll go into uh, my number three album of the eighties, um, Nine Inch Nails' "Pretty Hate Machine." That came out in eighty nine. Another album that's ahead of its time, but not metal. That that album is amazing. So good. good. Mm-hmm. So good. You know, terrible lie down in it. Sanctified oh, sin. So a friend of mine covered that one. Yeah. Amazing. I, I'm a huge Nine Inch Nails fan. And again, a lot of the stuff that I've mentioned on, I didn't listen to it in the eighties. I was seven years old. I wasn't listening to stuff like that. But um, in the early nineties, when I started getting into heavier stuff, Nine Inch Nails was one of like my gateway drugs into heavier things. Um, and pretty hate machine was definitely one of those that I listened to a lot and yeah, my parents listened to it a ton too. So my parents are cool. So yeah. Awesome. Um, what about you, Jay? You got a number two? I I've, I've done two in a row. So it's your turn. Okay. I got to save that one for last because it's my 
favorite metal album second favorite album of all time but favorite metal album so i'll wait for that one how about this one you're not going to guess this next one i i i think i do i, I can guess it oh no i would have not said that yep tales of creation from candle mass robot master switch that's for you bro i love it <laughs> one of the early uh early metal albums my drummer anthony at the best is back in the day like fifth grade or something and his brother was a huge headbanger he had the the hair and everything and you know whenever he'd leave we'd go check out his tape and cd collection yeah. and he had that and i was like the hell is this and i listened to it and i was like whoa you know that the singer had was like had that opera voice um you know it's one of those bands you put on and you know you have a cranking and you pull up to the red light the windows down the car pulls next to you and you turn it down <laughs> like metal with opera singing it's like it's it's like doom metal it's like the the, the uh, pioneers of like doom metal with no screaming or anything but it's like that slow like i don't know how anybody could play this slow and still like be tight you know like it's like whoa this is slow stuff but it's sludgy it's heavy uh it's just great great album yeah not very influenced by it musically but it's still up there with uh an all-time favorite of mine do you listen to that often i actually listened to it today when i was uh you know going through i was like you know pulled it up i was like that's right i can't forget this album i do still listen to it yep hmm. interesting yeah Dude, I still listen to the majority of music that I listened to when I was a kid. Like anything that I listened to back then, as far as like hard rock and metal, I still listen to. You know, I wanted to put a Flotsam and Jetsam album on this list, but I couldn't. Flotsam and Jetsam? Flotsam and Jetsam. Because when the storm came down, or when the storm comes down, it came out in 90. And that's, uh, you know, I was going to put um, No Place for Disgrace, but... It's not it's not up there with with all these other ones so i had to leave it off yeah. anyway i'll do one more yeah do it okay so that's that one all right let's talk about the ultimate sin from ozzy osbourne here folks jakey mm. e. lee on guitar who i think is the best ozzy osbourne guitar player and i know it's going to ruffle a lot of feathers because we all know Randy Rhodes, right? I don't care. Jake Ely is, number one, way better at, at, as a rhythm guitar player than Randy Rhodes could ever dreamed of being. Randy Rhodes was very loose, a lot of times sloppy playing rhythm guitar. Listen to those records he's on. You'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but I just think Jake, Jake Ely is, is the best Ozzy Osbourne guitar player. Um, and the album's great. Virtually front to back, it's a great album. And I Wait, really didn't get into this until a couple years ago. This what album. year was that? Was that 86 or something this came out? I'm trying. I, I forget, man. Um, 86. Yeah, so 86. Is it, is it Jake, it's Jake Lee's first record with him, right? Or second? When Randy Rhodes died, what, 81? 82. 82. 82 okay so maybe this is the second record with him but i know everyone uh, yeah robert uh, carcello says jay i love you but you're crazy <laughs> i'm just calling like, you know, i'm a i obviously love lead guitar but rhythm guitar is if you're not a great rhythm player in my opinion you're not a great guitar player you can be a great lead player i've recorded bands that their lead guitar player can play all these flashy amazing solos but when they laid down their rhythm tracks, ah, just didn't have it, you know, weren't very tight. Their picking style, picking style was kind of weird. It was more, you know, towards the lead stuff. And that's how I feel about um, Jakey e. Lee compared to, uh, what's his name? Randy. Randy, Randy Rhodes. Rhodes. Like I listened to those Randy Rhodes. The, the music's great. The solos are great. But his rhythm playing, he was just kind of sloppy and, you know, not very tight. 
<laughs> and it, yeah, and Randy Rhodes tone. <laughs> sounds like sounds like a kazoo. Yeah, I know. It- and I've I've fought myself with it with this for a while, but it's just I I can't I can't. It, it's it that that's it, man. If you're not a great rhythm player, no matter how great you are at soloing or leads and this and that and you know fretboard acro- yeah. acrobatics. It doesn't mean anything if you can't play rhythm guitar. Yep. To me, that's my opinion. I agree. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, the majority of a song is is rhythm. Yeah. You're only, yeah. you know, for most acts, for for, you know, the standard of of a tune has the guitar solo in the middle of the song for a couple bars or whatever. It's not the entire thing. Yeah. Right. It's true. Cool. All right, are you at number one now? What's that? Are you at number one or you still have two? I have two left. Okay. So you go and then I'll go and then you go. No, wait. Yeah. You go for, you go now. You you list your number two because I think I have two left. Okay. Super, super metal album. Thriller. Michael Jackson's my number two <laughs> album. I love Michael. Yeah. And he loved me back in the eighties too. But no, he, um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, um, no, but Thriller is one of the best <laughs> records of all time. I, I want to see someone try to prove me wrong. It's so yeah. good. Thriller is you know the quintessential Halloween song, and I love Halloween. So mm-hmm. right there, Beat It is amazing. <laughs> Billy Jean's great. I like PYT. Yeah. I have no idea who he's talking about or whatever. It was I don't even want to discuss that. Still a good song. So. <laughs> Dude, you're right. I mean, that's one of the all-time greatest albums of all time. It really is. Yeah. Um, the production, obviously, Quincy Jones. Um, but Michael is on fire. Literally on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the Pepsi yeah, commercial? Pepsi. Yeah. Supposedly, I heard from uh, somebody. We got to get. We got to keep it going here. But uh, I guess uh, never, we're not going to get into this now. Never mind. Well, it wasn't anything about anything illegal, but it was a part of the the, the fire that happened on his hair. Oh like, yeah, and that ended up triggering a um, a uh, painkiller um, addiction for Michael Jackson. And not many people know that. Man. Yep. Man, I remember I remember that commercial. And yeah, that's another thing. Pepsi yeah, commercial, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The the eighties though. Yeah. Thriller was another one. I think that, that like I changed had. his whole like skin tone. It was crazy. Oh my God. Um all right. So now I'll go since you listed another non metal album. I w- I wasn't gonna put this one in there because I literally just started listening to it a little over a month ago, and now you guys know what it is. It's docking back for the attack. And it's the least metal album on my list, but I had to put it in there just because of what's going on right now. I can't, I still can't stop listening to this album. I listened to it again today. Um, it's, it's a great record. There you go. There you go. Jeff yeah. there you go. There's a docking record for there you. you. <laughs> back to the attack 1987. It's front to back is just banger after banger. Um, and it's obviously got a, you know, Dream Warriors on it, which uh, yeah, is a great, great tune. And George Lynch, another one of those guys who uh, who is great at leads mm-hmm. and great at rhythm. Yeah. Oh, all right, go ahead. You got your number one. I do, but okay. real quick with uh, with Dokken, I'm not a huge Dokken fan. You know, a lot of that type of '80s. Uh, I don't even, is it metal? It's hard rock. Like, I don't know how to classify that. I, I guess at the time the genre was that. Yeah. Um, I just, that just doesn't do it for me. It's not that it's bad. And then George Lynch is the man. I uh, can't argue with that, but eh. I, I get it. Yeah. Just not my thing. So, uh, <laughs> Hellstorm, very good. Um, Johnny, if you could put that up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, oh my <laughs> <laughs> so my number one. Wait, where's the drum roll? J- Jay, you got to know what my number one record is in the 80s. 
and Justice for All Metallica. Oh. Yeah. Well, then it's, we'll talk about is. it together because my number one is... <laughs> so, <laughs> and Justice for All from Metallica. That's my number one, too, so we can talk about it together. All right, we, I know we've talked about Justice for All before on different shows, but this is where, to me, Metallica peaked. This is their – that it was such – like you were saying, that Master was the last thrash. Mm -hmm. Justice for All has got thrash elements to it, but it was so different. And creatively, I think they peaked right there. And, you know, Lars talked about in interviews like, well, we didn't want to make Injustice for All Part Two. I did. I know. You know, like, <laughs> you know you've heard him say that. Yeah. That is like, you know, Blacken is an amazing song. One to me is the quintessential metal song of all time. Like, if I was going to teach them, like, what's metal, I would play one for you. I just, it's so good. It's just, it's amazing. I listen to that record all the time. It's so good. Yeah, I think it's um, the attention to detail on that album. And they, they had mentioned it in, in interviews about, like, at the time, you know, between Anthrax, between Slayer, Testament, like, all these other bands that they were kind of, like, you know, in the same, you know, the whole thrash scene. It was all about you know, playing fast and the chops and all these licks and stuff like that. And they, they said that when they were writing that album, they were like, let's, let's show off a little bit. Let's, let's really put the pedal to the metal and, and, and do it. And uh, it shows because I think it's, it's definitely Lars. It's his most unique album. Like the drumming on that album should be what Lars Ulrich always played like, or plays like, like there's so many things he does that are unique on that album. And everybody can say what they want about Lars isn't a good drummer, isn't a good drummer. If it wasn't for Lars Ulrich, he has the most to say about the arrangements in Metallica. James mm -hmm. obviously writes 95% of the riffs in that in that band. Yep. You know, obviously with the first couple records being him and um, Dave Mustaine. But it's Lars is the one. And when you watch videos of them like, even from the last couple albums, like the making ofs and stuff like that, like James will have riffs and Lars will be like, okay, James, why don't we take, you know, the riff, riff, uh, he's looking at a chart. He has like everything charted of like what riff is what. Okay, riff 17, it's about the same tempo as riff uh, 20, uh, uh, 28, right? Okay, James, let's put two of those together, we'll put a little transition. And he'll like basically structure the songs. Yeah, it's it's true. Like it is. that band wouldn't be what they are without him, you know, say what you want about his drumming, but his drumming at the same time being, he's not a great drummer, Justice and the Black Album, right? You ask any drummer, whether, no, no matter what their skill is, the Black Album is fun as hell to play on drums. Super simple, but at the same time, just digging in in the pocket and you know the fills aren't anything fancy but there it's something about it and you know jimmy the drummer from gizmachi who is obviously the most talented musician in the band even he says it to this day like dude i could play that stuff in my sleep but it's still fun as hell to play you know and jimmy can virtually play anything but he says the black album there's something about it it's the groove and and the, you know something about the drums on that album just there's fun didn't and and I don't know. I could be completely sorry, wrong. Back to justice. I'm a, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's let's talk about justice. I don't want to talk about Calvin. Didn't didn't Lars take lessons, drum lessons, prior to making that album? Is that true? I don't know, but I know that uh, Kirk took lessons from Joe Satriani and became a worse guitar player after he got lessons from Joe. Which I don't know how the hell that happens. I think I think uh, Kirk. He started to get a little bluesy after he got those lessons from Satch. What year was I that? I, I thought it was before Justice. Yeah, so like 87, 88. After, after the uh, Master huh? of Puppets tour, I, I think. He got the lessons in 87? No, I think, well, maybe 88. Maybe after. Maybe it was after Justice. I thought it was... Uh... When was he getting the lessons? Because I know where Satriani used to teach in Berkeley. There's a little... A little uh, uh, store storefront 
mm-hmm. and it's known. I mean, not everybody knows about it, but I know about it. Where where and I'll next time I'm I'm in Berkeley, I'll I'll take you guys over there and I'll I'll do a video of the of the building, and that's where Satriani taught um, for a lot of years in in the uh, I guess in the eighties or maybe seventies mm-hmm. seventies and eighties. Yeah, because he he was he was a Vi's teacher. You know, and actually, Satriani sent Vi home after their uh, in the middle of their first lesson. He's like, "You're not ready yet." Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, what? imagine telling Steve Vi you're not ready. That was probably yeah. in New York, though. Yeah, that, yeah, because they're both there. they were both like they went to the same school or something in the same town or whatever, mm-hmm. um, which is crazy. Imagine two guys that talented, you know, two of the best guitar players to ever live, like being going to the same school or being in the same town. Mm-hmm. So anyway, justice, right? Yep, justice. <laughs> is the first um i remember trying to not like it because i didn't want to like heavy metal at the time i was like i can't like that it's that's too heavy but then you know my cousin sean he got nintendo i guess it would have been christmas of 88 i think and uh he got his parents got him or sorry santa got him justice and hysteria for christmas and we kept we were playing castlevania and we kept switching those you know flipping the tapes around and playing each one of them. <clears throat> and I remember I, I uh, flipped Justice from side A to side B or side one to side two, whatever the hell you want to call it. And Short of Straw kicked in. And as soon as the friggin' I was like, <laughs> wow. Like, it, it got me. I was instantly like, uh-oh, I like this. And then I borrowed the cassette and I dubbed it. You know how we used to say, I'm dubbing that. Um, but that was like the start of me being obsessed with heavy metal was, was Justice. Okay. And uh, to this day, there's something about that album. I know it. the lack of bass guitar sucks. But the fact that it's still as heavy as it is with that guitar tone, I love it. And it just, it cuts through, man, on that album. Like it's it's super... Has a lot of top end, but not too much where you're like, oh God, but it just cuts through. But you somebody drives past you in their car with their windows down and they have justice on, you know it's justice instantly. You're like, he's got justice. You know what I mean? It just has that <laughs> that something about that mix that I love. I still love it. Mm-hmm. I know people want to hear it remixed, and I do too, but I still want it to sound virtually the same as it does, but with the bass guitar in there. If it's remixed. I don't want the guitar to be touched at all. I just no, think the guitar they, tone they, to me. They'd probably have to put a high pass filter on some of the cut some of the lows out of the rhythm guitar. But right. other than that, it would still it would still sound virtually the same. It just wouldn't have the woofiness. And now the bass guitar would fill that 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 frequency. That was some producer talk right there. <laughs> but um I just to me that that and vulgar, the guitar tone from those two albums. Maybe it was why they're they're so amazing, but they just um, it's, there's nothing like it. It's just it's amazing. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, justice, yeah. man. Something about justice. Just uh, and when it's so, obviously they, a lot of those parts on that album are just like an orchestra of of guitars for a lot of those harmonies. And I've always loved the sound of that. You know. Right. All those guitar, all those harmony guitars, and I know they they did the harmonies and stuff. They really started with, but uh, there's a lot of that stuff on on Master of Puppets, and that was Cliff Burton. He was the one who introduced, like, had those guys start to, especially James, kind of like teaching them how to write guitar harmonies, and they really took it to the next level on Justice. And then after that, you know, they dabbled on the Black Album with some harmony parts here and there, but it wasn't at the level. It was like stripped down, even though a uh, black album is very iconic and the mix on it is one of sonically, it's one of the greatest sounding heavy metal albums, but it's still not justice. It's no. not. No, I just, I love the direction when Metallica went and I wish they continued with it. And I know from, you know, I'm a metal ambassador. <laughs> Like I love metal and I love what the black album did for hard, hard rock metal and, you know, the exposure of what it, you know, what it's done. But I, I don't know. I, I don't love that album. I've told you that it's just yeah. uh, justice is where they peaked and I wish they continued with that, but it is what it is. Well, I think, you know, a lot of it is uh, 
when you watch that tour in the Seattle 89 uh, in the binge and purge box set, when you watch that live concert, and I think it was filmed two different places or something like that, but whatever that live concert. And then you watch the other one from 92, I believe um, in the New Mexico, I believe from the black album. It's you, you can tell that like on the justice tour, they were hungry as hell. They wanted to be the greatest band in the world. They wanted to take over the world at that point. They were so hungry. And then when you watch the Black Album stuff, they were there. They were they were the biggest band in the, on the planet, and they knew it. So it was a different – just they had a different, a different vibe to them. You know? It was almost like they – got to where they wanted to go and now we can do something a little different with the black album we can kind of strip things back slow things down and i believe they did lose a lot of their edge on that even though like i said i'm not taking anything away from the black album i love it love it. it's my it's my third favorite metallica album behind justice master and then the black album but you know i wish they would have continued and you say you know the black album did wonders for you know whatever what's crazy is literally not too long after that album came out, heavy metal was was done. It was almost like a bad word. To a degree, yeah. Until Pantera. <laughs> and that's their, you know, for the longest time, that was their last heavy metal album because Load came out in, what, 94, right? Yeah. 94, 95? 95. That wasn't heavy metal. Now, so you had the guys flying the flag, the biggest metal band on the planet. All of a sudden, they weren't, putting out heavy metal records anymore right so i don't think that helped either true but then pantera pantera can they put out the, their heaviest album in 94 yeah and it didn't matter that's what wow. they're one of those bands that were able there was only a handful of bands that that survived mm -hmm. grunge you know we obviously van halen did yeah um, motley Crue, even though they kind of broke up <laughs> when that all happened so who knows you know pantera um, Metallica. I mean, Metallica could have put out anything at that point, and they had that library that that of, of or catalog of such great stuff that, like Pearl Jam, you know, those first two albums, they could have put out a, a you know records full of farts ever since those first two albums came out, and it wouldn't have mattered. They'd still sell out stadiums. So stink out. Yeah. <laughs> the um, but Pantera, they even they said we need to when the blackout was like what is this like we need to fly the flag like they knew they had to pick it up and put out vulgar and far beyond driven and then you know far beyond driven is the heaviest album ever to be number one and yep. you know thank god for them thank god for pantera that's but that's the thing like i and i i was going to school when all this stuff was happening with, I was in high school when, you know, it was turning from metal to grunge. And obviously, you know, the, the school system I went to, there was a lot of hip hop stuff too going on. So it wasn't really cool to be a headbanger. And then once grunge came in, it really wasn't cool to be a headbanger. Hmm. But Pantera was one of those bands that it didn't matter. They were so heavy and, and stayed true to what they were where, it was still cool to like Pantera, even though heavy metal was a bad word type of thing. Sure. You know, so I was, you know, when uh, when when Great Southern Trend Kill came out, ninety six, you know, we packed a, a car full of, of of dudes to go to Strawberries on on the Tuesday <laughs> and and left school to, to buy that album, and this is in the in the heart of grunge right there, ninety four when that album came out. You know, yeah. if you didn't like grunge, you weren't cool. But we had a car full of dudes packed, you know, like sardines in that thing. It's a piece of crap. I forget what the hell kind of car it was. But, you know, Pantera was still considered – it was okay to listen to Pantera. Well, yeah. in, um Great Southern Matter, Man, 96? No. Yeah, I think so, right? 96? 96. And yeah. then um, in the Strawberries across the street from the Newburgh Mall. Yep. So – I was just there last week back home. Do you know the Newburgh Mall is going to be a casino? They're turning the. Oh, I guess they got to make money somehow because malls are kapoop. Crazy. Wow. 
time. All right, what's going on here? I missed something yeah. in the in the chat. I don't know, but I know we're getting to uh, the end of the show. Yeah. And then I our next show, what we'll do is we'll little we'll, we'll, little taste. We're going to talk about the top five, you know, like the big four of metal, the big five of metal. We'll get into that because that's that'd be pretty fun. Since we've talked a lot about the bands today, that would be in that. Um, but to finish the show, Jay, yeah, is there a song or two you want people to check out? Yeah, let's go from those um those kind of obscure um, albums that I mentioned that maybe not many people uh, have heard or heard of before. Let me go into my uh, hold on a second. Where the hell? What am I doing? <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> let's go to uh, oh In Search of Sanity from Encore. Right? <laughs> what, what happened? Shimobiles and Metal. Oh, okay. I know if I had like, a plugger hanging out or something. Heading to Strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the title track, the title track to Onslaught's In Search of Sanity. Check that song out. I think everybody will be impressed with the rhythm guitar work in that one, and even the lead okay. guitar work. Um, so check that out, and then check out. Um, let's see. Pick a song off of Tales of Creation. Um, let's just go with Dark Reflections, track two, from Tales of Creation from Candlemass. Okay. The riff, the main riff. It's it's like it's one of those riffs that's like fun to sing. Like, you know, it's it's, it's funny, <laughs> but it's also awesome. I know? think this is the third or fourth time tonight you've been um, playing air drums and just killing it, bro. You're just killing it. <laughs> great air drummer, man. I'm a shitty, I'm a shitty air guitarist, but I'm a great air drummer. How about that? <laughs> that's awesome. Good man. Um, what, about I guess, you? what two songs do you have? I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Angel of Death, Slayer. Well, come on, everybody. Well, except for Johnny, maybe. But John, if Johnny heard that right now, I'd be like, "Oh, I, I know that song." Okay, so, all right, maybe not Angel of Death. Let me go something little. I'm gonna go off uh, Pretty Hate Machine. I'm gonna go with um, Sin off Pretty Hate Machine, track seven, I believe. Sin, track seven. Amazing song. I have a cool story to go with that. I'll do it on the next show with that song. It's pretty funny too. And then um, I'm going to go with Faith No More. I'm going to go Zombie Eaters. That song's great. Love it. That's one of my favorite Faith No More songs. So check that out. The first chord in that song, it's on acoustic guitar. It's probably in a hundred other songs. What is it? The uh, Wait, what is it? How's it go? That. It's it's probably in a hundred other songs that yeah. you know. Oh, you played that the other night. It was I was probably playing a different song on Saturday. Too. <laughs> on Saturday, Saturday night, remember you were playing the chord. Yeah, oh, I was playing the uh, what? I was playing that one. Is that Lisa Loeb? <laughs> <laughs> Saigon Kick. Love is on the way. Remember that one? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, but Zombie is a, is a great, great tune, man. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, those, those are, we got some good songs to, for everybody to check out. Definitely check it out, everyone. Uh, I, I like the Cranberries, Zombie. Zombie. Yeah, me too. I like. <laughs> Hell yeah. A month long tease, Wayno. That's right. I got you. I got you, Wayno. <laughs> How Face mentions Testaments into the pit. Great song. Um, <laughs> into the pit. <laughs> into the pit. Man. <laughs> four on the floor, man. That, that's that's probably that might, might be my second favorite. Uh, <laughs> the New Order might be my second favorite uh, Testament album. Actually, New Order. Favorite. Oh yeah, the New I thought Order. you didn't like New Order. What? I didn't. I thought you didn't like New Order. Or no, the old the odor, the tape, <laughs> and the car going to Strawberry is old order. <laughs> odor. Sherman Callahan, thank you for the stars, man. Thank you for the mic drop gift, dude. 
And uh, two things I want to apologize for before the end of the show. First, Keith Campbell, I apologize for you thinking that I was telling you to beat a Keith. <laughs> oh, dude, he's split. Yeah. He's gone. He's, he's gone. I, te- I found his phone number because, you know, people text me. So I found him and I texted him explaining that you weren't talking to him. You were reading two names, both right. names off. And yeah. Was that a- yeah. Did he respond or is he, did he block no. you? No, he, he hates us but- now. Let me just bring up, if anybody's watching, if anybody watched yesterday's show, the be- first 10 minutes, this would have been a perfect example of me putting on subscriber-only comments. I'm assuming uh, Beta Creep is not subscribed, because that's a new name I've never seen before. Subscribe, though, please. But if I would have had that enabled, you wouldn't have seen that, because it wouldn't. they wouldn't have shown up. Okay. I remember how yesterday I was talking about how having subscriber only comments to keep out certain things. Not that that was weird, yeah. but I'm just saying yesterday, Mancuda, you know, gave it to me for, for that because somebody who's here all the time isn't subscribed. We found out, which is very bizarre. Watch the first 10 minutes of yesterday's show. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'll, but I'll today, what, today it would have been the perfect example of that, though. <laughs> Sure. So Keith, Keith Either- Campbell, I, I'm I'm sorry. Please, um, please don't be mad at me and don't lose respect for Boner James. I apologize. And the second <laughs> thing I want to apologize for is my huge forehead with like the light glistening. So I know I make fun of Jay's nose a lot, but my forehead is not much better. So I want to apologize. Look at this thing. Imagine That's his funny. nose and your forehead. I was about to say that. My five head is just what's wrong with me? Hard throw in there. Yeah, imagine my forehead or my my nose with your forehead. Yeah, that'd be great. Cobra and, Kai, your assignment. <laughs> <laughs> and the Phil Bags, I gave uh, my my five head to my daughter, and her five head is huge. Oh, <laughs> he's got. She has to, has to wear bangs. That's all. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. But you guys can't really see the pointiness of Jay's nose. We have to get more of like a side angle. I'll step my computer up this way. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Oh my gosh. But uh, yeah. So you can't make fun of of yourself, then you have no right to make fun of anybody else. That's how I look at it. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to make fun of anybody, make fun of yourself. Yep. Definitely. Um, and before we split, I, I have to do this. Oh yeah. I've got, I've got, I've got an unboxing here. I've had this for a few days, probably a week and, um, it has no return address. So I, I really don't know what it is, but somebody keeps saying, Johnny, Johnny, did you get my, my package? This is probably it. So I'm going to do this right here. This is now an official unboxing program. Here we go. <laughs> well, I was late. Yeah. Wow. Imagine cool. us talking about guitars on here. That's thoughts a new from a uh, guitar player. We should actually uh thoughts from a guitar player, Jersey Frank. Nice. Frank, are you in here? Are you here, man? This is cool, man, dude. I'm I'm gonna do a standalone video for you. We're we're gonna talk about your book. Um, what is it, Ned? Can you give an idea, hey, Ned? Yeah, what is it? Can you give well, us you a read, little? Uh, well, you know, if you read the back. Uh, what, what, it, what kind of uh, what does it talk about? After of oh, oh, oh man, oh look at this. Is Ned go. dropping some heat on the floor over there? You know, because I dropped the package. And he he's messing around with the uh, he's he's chewing part of the part of the package. There you are. Hey Frank. Oh, there you, are. Frank. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, it's stuck. Oh no. <laughs> All right. uh, that's probably not good, but Frank, dude. Yeah, we'll talk about talk about your book. Let me just. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. Jersey Frank, I'll we'll do we'll do a, a standalone video for you, man. 
But yeah, I'll, I'll read the back here for you guys. Thoughts from a guitar player, Jersey Frank. This is a nice book, man. Uh, really quick, after nearly four decades of playing the guitar, Jersey Frank has decided to share some brain droppings with his fellow string slingers. In this book, uh, Jersey Frank touches on such tasty topics as getting inspiration from favorite players, how to choose the right guitar and amp over and over again, which we're, we're doing yep. all the time, making sense of all those crazy little effects pedals, playing live and dealing with idiots. <laughs> Present company not included. <laughs> Matching the right scales with the right chords, kind of. Searching for the sound and then searching for more. So that that's part of part of part of uh this but dude thank cool. you for sent thank you for sending this man and yeah we'll 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 talk about this on future shows and i'll dedicate a future video to this because this is very cool that you sent this man yeah cool. jersey jersey frank hey frank cool. uh where can you purchase this book if anybody in the chat wants to uh pick up a copy where can they get it jerseyfrank.com well, there you go. And actually, it has his email on the back. On the back, Jersey Frank F L A at Gmail dot com. Okay. Cool. Frank, I hope you uh, you're enjoying your Gizmachi shirt as well. Oh yeah, he said it's he said it's on Amazon. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> awesome. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> Thank cool. you, man. Somebody... I'll learn how to read, and then I'll read it. <laughs> Somebody should write a book for people that live with guitarists <clears throat> and kind of like explain, you know, how to deal with somebody that, you know, because I don't know how you guys are, but if I'm playing, if I, <laughs> and I've always been like this, if I'm playing guitar and somebody <laughs> calls or something like that, I, I'm not very, uh, like my brain isn't turned on for verbal communication. Oh. It's still here. You know, and I've, like I've, you I've, heard it from, I've heard it from numerous people. Like, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm playing guitar. Like I can tell <laughs> not, not because they can hear the guitar in the background. I'm not that rude, but they can tell because it, I'm not talking to them. I'm not, you know, I, it's not worth is it, it. Is it like when you just wake up and you accidentally answer the phone? <laughs> you grab that's your alarm clock. Worst. <laughs> that's the worst when you, you just happen to wake up and you answer the phone and, and oh, oh man. Hello? <laughs> oh, it's the, it's the clock. You know. No, yeah, I've I've done that. Your alarm clock goes off and you're like, who the hell is calling me this early? Oh, I guess I should get up now. It's Rob Johnson. He wants to go live. It's <laughs> <laughs> 6 30 a.m. <laughs> On the East Coast. <laughs> But I, don't, I mean, is anybody else is anybody else out there like that, where if they're playing guitar, you, know, you you get into a different mindset when you're doing something like that, you know, where if somebody calls me or even if if uh, Jimmy comes upstairs to say something, I'm just like that side of that part of my brain isn't isn't on at that point. I can talk, but I'm not like I can't get into a conversation, you know. I don't answer the phone most times anyway no matter what i always <laughs> let it go to, to voicemail and because if it's important they'll leave a message or they'll get old of me or they'll call you back right you after know. but then you're like yeah. somebody better be dead <laughs> hello <laughs> oh my gosh how dare you or just send you question marks yeah and sometimes you know my my whenever i uh like if my dad calls or something i'm playing i i he like almost makes you feel bad you know, that you like, you want to get off the phone to go to get back and play guitar. Like, you know, some people don't understand. That's a different <clears throat> thing. Like my brain has to be somewhere else while I'm playing. Yeah. Yeah. Frank knows what I'm talking about. He says, if I'm playing guitar for a few hours and then have to stop to do anything else, it takes me a while to get out of that head space, I guess, and, and come back down to reality. It's true, man. Yeah, absolutely. But that's what I'm saying. Someone should write a book, Frank, on <laughs> how the how the musician's brain works when they're actually doing that, and then they have to get back to reality. I think he did. 
Because it's thoughts from a guitar player. But that... Yeah. Maybe. Oh, he talks about other guitar players in here, too. Yeah. Oh, cool. He talks about Alex Lifeson. Ooh, I like me some... Alex Lifeson, I guess, during his... Uh... We got to go. It's 1030. But Alex yeah. Lifeson, during his... um. Oh my gosh! His Sweetwater uh, thing. Look who else he talks oh. about? Oh yeah, I know that guy. Hell yeah, heard of him. But Alex Favorite. Larson has has a new. Uh, he has some new music with a with a different band. He's going to be putting out mm -hmm. either. I think it's being mixed right now or something. So it'll either be out later this year or next year. So that should be cool. Well, the, the toughest thing for me, real quick, with uh, playing, I can never play for a minute. Like, I'm going to go play this song real fast. All of a sudden, it's an hour later. Like, I oh, cannot yeah. play guitar for five, ten minutes. It's always an hour event. Yeah. And if you want to, if you end up wanting to play for a while, you know, I, I, anybody with children will know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I'll sit down to play. And, you know, three minutes later, Killian wakes up early from his nap. That's, you know, he's going <laughs> to... Because you start getting into them, like, I'm going to play right now. You know, because as a parent, when your kids are young, you can't just disappear for four hours and go play guitar and, you know, everything like that. So when you get that time, you're like, yes, I got some time to play. And the next thing you know, three minutes in, five minutes in, God damn it. You know, <laughs> so it's true. That's, that's okay, though. Wouldn't change it for the world. Agreed. Cool. All right. I guess uh, I know it's late where you guys are. Yeah, I got. I got to go put Ellie to bed. It's. it's I'm gonna get. Well, Where's I have a cool stuff? wife, thank God. But you know, I'm still gonna get it when I go downstairs. It's ten thirty. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, ch channel members. Oh my gosh. No, where where is it? This one. I always miss this one. Where's the. Uh... No. Oh, it's on the Halloween one. The um. <laughs> yeah. Like those are in tune with each other. Thank you so much, channel members. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank Damn. you, for, thank you for all your support. And uh, many channel members. <clears throat> yeah. And just remember, never a ship. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Thanks, guys. See everyone next next month, the end of July. And then uh, check check out Jay and Johnny on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Talking Van Halen. We'll be on this Friday. Uh, it'll look something like that, probably. And uh, join the Van Halen Facebook group, where we just passed sixty thousand members, and I'm cleaning the place up, and it's it's pretty. Uh, it's getting to be pretty good now. So, join, please. But don't curse. Yeah, no bad words. All right. Otherwise. All right, last <laughs> words. Um, no, I thought it was a fun show tonight. That's that's all I'll say. Yeah, definitely great show. We we'll talk about some metal that I still listen to this day. So, greatest albums of all time. It's some a great show when we, get, we when we talk to Pesh Mode. So, thank you, everyone. I'm gonna. I'm, when is that? Because I'm gonna have diarrhea that night. <laughs> <laughs> call out sick. <laughs> so, oh, that's tonight. Oh. Oh, I got I got to go. Oh. All right. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Watch another video and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, we can tell. <laughs> Kevin Smith. See ya. <laughs>